Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Eat Predators Daily. I'm your host, Alexa Nicholas. Welcome to the new setup. <laughs> There's a bunch of protest signs behind me. I'm not sure. Okay. They can hear me? Okay, well, I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> So, hello, welcome to E-Predators Daily. I'm your host, Alexa Nicholas. We have a new setup, as you can tell. I don't know if anyone knows what these are behind me, but I'm gonna let the chat go on this. Who knows what these protest signs are behind me? Oh, we're working perfectly this time? That makes me so happy. I'm so nervous. Every time now, I'm like, can everyone hear me, see me? Is everything okay? So who knows what's behind me? Anyone? Loud and clear, I love to hear that. <laughs> Great, so anyways, these protest signs are from like base, I think it's like 28. Miko, have we done 28 or is it 28 protests that we did last year? Wait, we're getting close to 30? Okay, so I just wanna talk about the origins of E-Predators really quickly. The origins of E-Predators is like a total grassroots movement, I guess, um, where I was protesting alongside a bunch of other survivors of the music industry against huge institutions like Warner Music Group, Sony, Brian Friedman's law firm, Diplo's show. Actually, I want to pull that up. Wait, can we pull up Diplo's protest? That was the first protest ever for E-Predators. And it's so crazy because while we were protesting, we got our signs ripped up. We got people trying to fight us. And that's what basically let me know that I wanted to continue doing this because I realized, oh shit, <laughs> this is actually a problem. People don't believe survivors still. Are we, are we showing it? I can't hear it. <laughs> I don't even know what's happening. Oh yeah, once I hear it on speaker, I can totally hear. He definitely saw me. When he saw us, by the way, I was across the street with other survivors, like maybe three other survivors. I can't see it, but I remember it. <laughs> I wish I could see it. Yeah, show it to me. Yes! Okay, so see, Eat the Rich? That's where Eat Predators came from. So basically, when I was setting up my protest sign, I was like, okay, what is my protest sign gonna be? It was inspired by Eat the Rich. There I am with my COVID mask in a crowd. <laughs> this was so long ago. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, people were using floaties to, to totally like get rid of our signs. I remember that. There was like a woman who was like standing behind the DJ booth who was like pointing at the band to like use their floaty to like smack I remember that. I remember that. And we got our signs ripped up. Look at, there he is. There's Diplo. Hey, Diplo. I'll never forget when he looked at. Oh, I'll, I'll never forget like that either. I'll never forget it. That was his first ghost moment. <laughs> Wait, me and the COVID mask, though, is out of control. This was such a long time ago. This was the first protest. It was we should really have the original one, honestly, behind us. But behind this, me. This was like your second birth. You've given birth three times. I have this, given birth three this times. This is the second one I've ever experienced. Can we hear you, Minko? I guess I'm having issues. <laughs> yeah, welcome but to the world of audio. Now I'm, I'm like this like omnipresent voice coming from, <laughs> from the side. I'm like, no, you're not even a voice. You can't be heard. 
I can't be seen. Only but I now can, I can hear be you. Heard. Only I can hear you. Okay. Well. So, anyways, that was the first. That was the first protest for e predators. That's how e predators was born. Essentially, it just came out of me. Well, actually, let's go into the tale really quickly. I actually don't mind. Am I full screen? Because I can't see myself full screen. Okay, cool. So basically, just to give you guys a little bit of information about how e-predators really formed, it was because around January of last year, I found out about that stipulated judgment, right? And that was around the same time with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. And I know maybe the chat's gonna get super angry about this, and that's okay. We can all have our own opinions about this. And I think that I really want this platform to be a place where we can talk about these things in a very healthy way, where we're not degrading one another or dehumanizing one another, that we're actually having discussions. And if we have different opinions, I think we need to learn that's okay. That's actually all right. It doesn't make your opinion less than or the other person less than. We can actually just dis like discuss our opinions and and have a good, healthy conversation about these things. So let's make sure that when we're discussing Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, that we're respectful to one another. I think it's trigger very warning. important. What, trigger warning now? Oh, I was saying trigger warning to Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Yeah, trigger warning. Because I think people are triggered by Johnny Depp and people are triggered by Amber Heard. And I have my own personal opinion about that whole trial. And that's my own personal opinion. I'm allowed to have that. Just like you're allowed to have your own personal opinion about that. But this was during that time, and I was a I'm a survivor, and I had to watch that trial. I watched like every single second and every single minute of that trial with my husband, with my one-year-old. I think she was, Mika, was she one at the time? Yeah, I think she was one at the time. It was extremely triggering, and we saw the whole world making fun of traumatic events, right? I mean, that's all I really saw. It's irrelevant of what our opinions are of the case. What, what I saw was a whole bunch of people arguing with one another and making fun of traumatic events. And that's what really scared me as a survivor. I thought, okay, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore. I don't, I, I don't wanna speak up anymore. I don't wanna be an advocate, not even for others and for myself. I was legit freaked out. I got, um, I can't even say this, D threats. I got D threats online for my daughter, for myself, and it was extremely traumatizing. And I backed off for a moment. But while I was backing off, I realized if this is what it takes, this is it. Just like internet trolls, right? <laughs> Just like people arguing, being super dehumanizing to one another. If this is what it takes to end the advocacy work for survivors of SA, then I'm gonna take it right on. And that's what kind of birthed e-predators. I didn't know what I was gonna do with e-predators until Diplo had an all ages, all ages show. And that's when I realized, oh wait, so he has a current lawsuit happening and a criminal investigation. And this man is doing an all ages show in an ice cream truck. I mean, a legit, we all know how creepy ice cream trucks are like that's kind of like the what's the stereotype of someone creepy is someone rolling up in an ice cream truck and here we have diplo rolling up in an ice cream truck with eat the rich on it even though he's a rich man he's a rich man himself he lives up in topanga he has millions of dollars and he's saying eat the rich and i just found that peculiar and outraging like outrageous in my opinion. And then I tried to organize a mini protest. Basically, I started reaching out to my survivor community. I told my mom right then and there, like, we're gonna go protest, can you watch Nova? And that's, do you remember Mika? It's hilarious because- <laughs> It's like hilarious. Well, it's hilarious because like the energy that was behind that the protest has the same like frantic- Thanks, Peyton. Frantic, frantic chaos that every single act that e-predators um, yeah. provides like we were scrambling last minute printing for yes. the first time um, showing up like you were contacting and our signs survivors. were whack like our <laughs> signs were they not were not nice. whack like look at what they became I mean yeah truly <laughs> starting also like, can I just yeah. say that strangely Foxygen 
that open letter for Foxygen and the uh, Pharaoh Allen documentary also true playing a large role into I would say this the Woody Allen thing the Predators campaign mo m more so that really upset me I don't know who has seen in the chat the Woody Allen uh, documentary has anyone seen that documentary about him and his daughter Yeah, thank you, Peyton, again. I do want to say thanks, Peyton. I actually did a cameo for Peyton. Peyton is chill as bleep. <laughs> yeah, oh, God, Woody Allen. And then Woody Allen's trying to be the poster boy for Me Too movement. Like, that's a whole other <laughs> ridiculous fucking side note. Like, what are you talking about, Woody Allen? What do you mean you're the poster boy for Me Too? The poster boy to warn us <laughs> in the Me Too movement, for sure. <laughs> Truth. But like not the poster boy for the Me Too movement. That's a little bit, uh, I think your ego has. You know who's the new poster boy for Who? the Me Too movement? Who? The Brandon Quinn. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I guess we'll go into Brandon Quinn. Is that my cue to go into Brandon that's, Quinn? That's your cue. All right, so I don't know who knows about Brandon Quinn, but basically in the beginning of our YouTube channel, when I was nine months pregnant and within my birth window, um, a couple of minors came forward to me, allegedly, about an alleged conversation they had with Justin Long and Brandon Quinn. As a mom, after reading those conversations and definitely after reading Brandon Quinn's conversations with this minor, um, it just, it was outrageous. It was so criminal and so disturbing and disgusting that I was beyond triggered. I was feeling outraged by it. So I thought, okay, let's go live, but live didn't work. And then we had to end up filming a whole episode basically on Brandon Quinn and Justin Long. And we stayed up till like three in the morning. And then finally the video came out the next day. I guess around the same day that the video came out, Brandon Quinn's lawyers reached out to the Eat Predators email account and sent this very threatening uh, cease and desist, basically, that these emails are, you know, these DMs with these minors are not real, and I have to basically remove them, right, Mika? I mean, that's basically what they were saying. They wanted them to be removed. So they wanted them to be removed, and I almost got a little bit freaked out. I mean, I'm like nine months pregnant, I'm hormonal. I'm very protective of children. I'm very protective of anyone who's being exploited, um, especially of SA, with, with SA. Um, and I almost gave up. Can we that, give a quick shout out? You can do the Simi. Who, who? Oh, hi, Simi. Another, oh my God, Simi, you're so kind. Wait, what? Simi, I want, stop. <laughs> Don't do it. That's so sweet. Thank you so much, Simi. That really, no, that really means a lot. Seriously, that, that, that really means a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Everyone give a shout out in the comments to Simi. Simi is really holding it down right now. If, if we could just do like a 360 This production requires support um, from our community. So thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, just to say, like, side note, we're we're in a bedroom right now. I know it looks hopefully sick as fuck, um, but we're in a bedroom uh, currently in a one bedroom place, and we're doing this, and we're doing this from our heart. So any type of donation is just like the kindest thing ever because it's hard work, and we don't have many resources. And I'm a mom of two and I'm pumping and <laughs> I'm doing the whole thing. Um, and so like this, this means a lot, you know, this, this, this really means a lot. Um, so thank you so much, Simi. And then now sadly going back to Brandon Quinn. Um, so Brandon Quinn sent the season to sis. I got freaked out. 
Um, this happened to me multiple times before. I always get freaked out, to be honest, and then I come back in, like, raging. Um, but I got freaked out. I thought I was going to take down the video, and then I realized, no, I have an actual screen recording of this alleged victim, no, this victim, this young girl, this 15-year-old girl, where she goes into her DMs and actually shows the conversation and then goes into his profile and shows that it was verified. And, you know, after knowing that I had that, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to share that part to Twitter. I shared that. I also wrote an email to the lawyer saying, like, I'm about to go into labor because I was at any moment. I think I went into labor like two days after that season desist. And so I wrote her that. And guess what? Do we have claps? <laughs> Like, it is. Yeah, it is my cauldron. Like, it begins with Twitter. It does begin with Twitter. The pot is stirred. The best part about it is he's he, he ghosted me. The ghost ghosted me, which is a very weird feeling. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think a ghost could. I guess a ghost should ghost, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what ghosts do. They ghost you. Um, but that's what happened to me. Brandon Quinn is nowhere to be found. I waited for a few weeks, just to make sure that we were safe as a family. Because you have to remember, for me, my, how do I put this without getting flagged by YouTube? Um, but my abuser, um, Michael Milosh, he took everything from me. So I, I, I don't have anything, you know, really, at this point. So I needed help from the community, and that's when I reached out to all of you, and you all came in so strong and so amazing. I've never seen anything like it, and also that GoFundMe was to show other survivors that our community, that community is actually willing to come in and protect and support survivors, and that was so admirable, and I just want to say thank you every single person that donated to that GoFundMe. Thank you so much, because not only did that show predators what survivors are capable of when it comes to reaching out to community for help. But it also showed that if you're in like a situation where you feel like not financially safe to go up against a predator, you might have that community. And that was just, I don't know, that like really made me be able to sleep at night because I'm not gonna lie, that season desist definitely freaked me out for a moment because I'm trying to do this advocacy work and I know that lawyers are going to come after me um, doing this advocacy work, but it's worth it. And now seeing how community shows up, it was just so beautiful and wonderful. So I want to give a shout out to everyone. I also refunded every single GoFundMe member that was part of that contribution. And so you should all have your, your money back because um, I did not have to get a lawyer to send a response that season and desist since Brandon Quinn ghosted me <laughs> so thank you thank you thank you and I didn't use a dime I sent it back and I just want to say thank you guys so much for all of that support and for showing survivors that community is showing up for them and, so. and speaking of community we did have another donation from simi another simi I think wait I, there's two simis no there's not I, I, I don't believe there's two I, simis unless it was a glitch this. but mm -mm. different profile picture Difference, Dude, two wait, there's simis. two simmies up in simis. here? Thank you. Yo, simmy. Simmy with an I-E. <laughs> also, can simi I say that this that was like the one of numerous times where you've basically been threatened to stop your advocacy work. True. And predators are True. quick to flex like their True. power. And True. I mean, most uh, more often than not, when you stare them down and not back down, um, yeah. they, they hide away. So... They disappear. They all disappear. We've had many on milk cartons, so. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with predators, right? You have to stare them in the eye. You have to not blink almost. And you have to hold your territory. Um, because the minute a predator smells fear, that's when they really start to exploit that. Because that's what a predator does. They, I think people kind of get it confused. There's SA predators and there's predators, right? And SA predators, it's just a symptom of a predator, but there's multiple different kinds of predators. I would say capitalism is a predator. Um, it's a systemic predator. 
So there's multiple different kinds of predators. And when you lock in with them and you don't back down, they kind of like walk on through. I mean, from my own personal experience, once I lock them down, I look at them, I'm like, I'm gonna stay here. I know what I'm standing up for. I'm not moving whatsoever. They just kind of move on by. So and for my own recommendation. Not moving on by? Who? No, Danny Masterson's locked up. Danny Masterson has no choice but to, to, to move on. He has nowhere to go. Has nowhere to go. Danny Masterson's locked up. Um, do you, what do a wonderful, and, and to just kind of make it full circle. So last year was Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, right? And then this year is Danny Masterson. So we're seeing kind of a balance, I would say, um, of what survivors are feeling like. Last year it felt very depleting. And this year it's feeling very empowering. Um, personally, as a survivor, and I'm sure a lot of survivors feel that way, that we see Danny Masterson locked up. And also we see their enablers, like Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, getting public scrutiny for the fact that they were supporting Danny Masterson. And that's wonderful as survivors, right? Like, we're constantly used to enabling, enabling behavior, where we see even our own friends making excuses or standing up for someone that has harmed us. And so I think it's great that this year, survivors are seeing some type of backlash for those that stand up for the R word. And people are sharing their stories, just like that TikTok video that was released the other day. Um, I'm getting there. People are, are unafraid to actually stand speak up. out. Actually, I love this person. This person's, I think it's Dr. Can we pull Dunn. It up? Yeah, no, no, let's definitely, I wanna pull it up here too. Dr. Dunn is a homie. Let's let's pull up Dr. Dunn. Are, are, is it pulled up? Because I'm going to watch it at the same time as you guys. Yeah, let's watch it on your computer. So go into your, you're ready to, to enter the Discord. It goes into Discord. It's going to go into my Safari. So I don't know how um, to like. Go onto your Discord, click on links, and you'll see it right in there. And, and we'll queue it up for you. Oh, I see. No, that's gold base. Uh, oh, right here? Yep, it should be the third no, link. No, that's, it's not the third link. The third link? That's Patreon. Are you in links? I'm in, I'm in links, yeah. But I can go like... In DC Daily Live? Yeah. No, it's not opening in my Safari. It's op only opening in Discord. Do you guys have it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Can I just, you just pull it up. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to pull it up at the same time. <laughs> Okay, uh, here it is. Let's watch it, shall we? Why can't I play it? I can't even play it in my, oh, open yeah, in really browser. Story. It's yeah. And only opening no. in with all these no. horrific no. deep. Wait, I can't even, I can't even play it, you guys, on my Safari. Okay, but I want to watch it. Okay, I guess I can just listen to it. Oh, great. Awesome. Night I had in Hollywood is all making sense. And this What's the audio underneath? I hear myself underneath this woman. Oh, I sorry. I see. Um, looks like there's two links playing here. So I got you. You want to try? Let's try it again. Awesome. Let's try it again. So, this is my Danny Masterson and Bijou Phillips story. No, I don't hear it. But now she just, she turned off. I just don't hear her. I love that we're just watch. Are we watching her without hearing her? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, this is my Danny Masterson and Bijou Phillips. Story. I'm curious though, and Alexa, what are you seeing on your Discord? I'm just only seeing to open up in browser, and then when I open up in browser, I can't play the video because TikTok won't let me. Oh. Yeah, TikTok blocks it. Got you. You're... All right. Okay, let's here go. it comes. This is my Danny Masterson and Bijou Phillips story. And 
with all can these see horrific me? details yes, that are coming can. out okay, about good. this trial, this one crazy night I had in Hollywood is all making sense. And this had baffled me for years. Like, I had no clue. And it was one of the wildest nights I've ever had in Hollywood. So this is how it went down. So the year was like 2005. It's a long, long time ago. And me and my girlfriend are at Club oh, High, exactly. which if you know, you know, it was one of the hot spots in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super fun. That was a hot spot, by the way. Just saying Club Hyde. Were you 15 years old? I think I was around 15, yeah. During the time that Milos almost started creeping. And we were invited to go back to Danny's house for an after party. So it's like 2 in the morning. These guys uh, drove us over there. Again, yep. I was in my early 20s, not very smart. But we go over <laughs> to Danny's house. And when we walk in... Uh, there's probably about seven guys there, one other female, and Danny and Bijou. And Bijou, Bijou does not exactly look impressed when we walk in the door. Of course From not. From the moment we walk in, she was kind of like, you know, oh, God. I so, know what Danny is. You know, I try to make the best of it. I'm super friendly. I go up to her, say hi, and I'm like, hi, I'm Kelly. And she just turns her face like, like she was not having it. And I'm like. Okay, no problem. Right. So the drinks are flowing, <laughs> and we sit down to play some poker. And I love poker, and I'm super competitive. And Danny is directly across from me at the table. Bijou is next to him. And a couple of the guys are joining us, and my friend Erica is sitting right next to me. And wow. we're drinking our drinks. I'm really into this game. I threw down, and we're playing some poker. Danny is dealing. And within probably 30 minutes of being there, my friend Erica starts slurring her words, yeah. like, ooh, ooh, ooh. and I'm like, oh yo, my God, girl, lock, lock it up. I have to get it together. <laughs> like, what is I love wrong? girls being like, don't be so drunk. But really, the guys want you, the predators want you drunk. And, I, you know, she's kind of swaying back and forth in her seat. And I'm kind of like, hey, you all right? And she's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm going to go to the bathroom. So Erica kind of excuses herself from the table. And she walks down towards the bathroom, towards the back. And at this point, I'm kind of looking across to Bijou, who is just sitting across Yo, the chat, table. just like go off on this, please. Like, not having it. And I'm like, <laughs> she'll be right back. So we're kind of sitting there, and the vibe is definitely changing amongst this little after party. And without saying anything, no words, no nothing, Danny stands up, and he <gasps> walks to the back, too. No! And I'm, like, thinking to myself, man, this is so awkward. We're definitely overstaying our welcome, welcome right now. Like, this is, like, ooh, oh I feel so, like, weird, so uncomfortable. And not to mention, everyone cleared the table, except for me and Bijou, who's sitting right across from me, just staring me down. And I'm just like, <laughs> so crazy weather we're having, right? Like, I'm just, like, grasping crazy at straws weather. to, like, not <laughs> make things uncomfortable. So she is just staring. It's just me and her, and she is just staring me down. And I'm like, I... <laughs> I better go check on my friend. So I get up and I walk down. I can see Danny kind of standing with his arm up above my friend. And my friend is like leaning against the wall, like holding herself up, uh -huh. all her body weight against this wall. Right. And he's, he's like up above her, like talking to her, looking down, like super kind of aggressively. And I'm like, oh, I bet he's ha not happy that like a drunk girl is at his house. Oh, so man. I go over and I grab her very quickly. And I'm like, oh, sorry, excuse us. So I start kind of dragging Erica and I notice yeah. that she is completely on top of me like she can't hold her weight whatsoever and i drag her back to the table i sit her down and again bijou is just like still sitting there at the table Ew, i bijou. run and grab her some water bring her some water back all of a sudden danny kind of comes and sits down people are kind of coming back to the table to play and bijou loses her mind like she the rage and anger uh -huh. that comes out of her was something i've never seen she's just like you know, keep all with her. Like, just like, I mean, it was nuts. And I'm like, no problem. No problem. I'm trying to de escalate it. Like, we're leaving. Excuse us. We're, don't worry. We're Every already knows on our way out. Scenario, I'm, I'm by sorry. the way, this Please is like, a, uh, we know this. When someone's. Are we pausing this for a second? Can I pause it for a second? Okay. So, we all know this, right? I mean, I know this from being in Hollywood in the club scene when I was 15 years old. Um, just a side note, um, I used to go to this club called Ledoux, and Ledoux was in Hollywood, um, and it was obviously 21 and over, but I knew a girl 
who worked for Ledoux and her job specifically was to, this is so gross, you guys. Wait, can I see myself just so I can know that I'm like all good here? Okay, so this is, this is the Hollywood scene. So she worked for Ledoux and her main purpose, her job was to go around and this is for real guys, find girls to bring to the men that were buying a table that night. And so I'm sure you guys know what that is. Like basically you buy a table at Ledoux. I think it was like five grand. You get like unlimited alcohol, yada, yada, yada. Um, and so her job was to find girls to bring to those tables. So it's our culture. Can't say the word on here, but it's our culture. And so these girls would get brought by a girl because they thought a girl would be more trusting, right? So these men would prey on girls who needed a job and they would use these girls to prey on other girls to bring them into what she told me was a black bedroom. And so apparently above Ledoux at the top, there was a black bed. It was like a heart shaped or something. I don't remember perfectly, but there was a black bed. And these girls would get brought up there after they were drinking with these guys at these tables. And I saw tons of celebrities there. Okay, I saw tons and tons and tons of celebrities. And my way of getting in, I was 15 at the time. And so the way to get in was to like give them a DRUG or to, you know, wear a short, short skirt. And if you wore a short, short skirt, then the bodyguard was more likely to allow you into these clubs. And you have to remember, this was the era of patriarchy. Like, I mean, patriarchy is still reigning, obviously. But this was, the uh, you know, no one even knew what the word patriarchy meant or what that was. And so here I am at 15 years old, just thinking I'm getting to go into an adult, you know, bar. But really, I'm being preyed upon. I never got up into the black bed. The person I knew never let me up there, but I would watch her and I would watch her go from each table, just recruiting very, very, very drunk girls. Um, and that was an actual job at the time. So anyways, listening to her say the story, I have my own flashbacks of that. And I remember when I would see girls like super, super wasted, I would be like, oh, you know, like it was almost like, I, I was protecting them, but at the same time, I didn't want guys to get angry about that. But then I realized a lot of these predators wanted that. And a lot of those guys were doing that to the girls at the club. And we didn't know that then. We didn't know that that was even, I didn't know what that was. Um, so now when I look back, I'm like, maybe those girls weren't um, as drunk as they appeared. You know, maybe that wasn't the case. Maybe they were... Something slipped into their drink and that freaks me out. So hearing her, you know, we should really pay attention to that because if one of our girlfriends or our boyfriends or our friend in general is starting to look very, very wasted in a way that is unrecognizable to them, then maybe we should start to realize that something maybe has happened to them, right? So we have more education now. So I'm sorry, I, I, I just had to say that, my, my two cents into uh, the, the whole thing. And by the way, my mom did not know where I was. I would sneak out in the sliding door late at night while she was sleeping and snoring, okay? This is what teenagers do. They, they, they sneak out. So let's not blame the moms, let's not blame the dads per se. Like, teenagers find a way um, because they don't even know the harm that's about to um, necessarily happen to them. So anyways, let's, let's return to the TikTok. I just wanted to give my own two cents. I hope that's okay. Is that okay? Sorry, I yeah. had to. So I pick up my friend and I'm like, come on, we're, we're leaving, let's go. I pick her up and as I stand up, Bijou stands up super aggressively and just like, I want you out. What are you doing here? Like, I mean, it, it is just like screams, yell, anger, anger, curse words like, just up. everywhere. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm like grabbing my friend and I'm trying to like drag her out. And my friend is just like, like wobbling and like, I've never seen her. And I'm like, oh my God. So I'm like trying to pull her out. And the thing that she murmurs to me was, 
I forgot my purse. And I I'm just like, wanted to be oh seen. Oh my I god! Just... And again, now Bijou is following behind us now at this point as I'm trying to exit towards the front so door. So Bijou knew. And I'm like, okay, she forgot her purse. She I'm knew. So sorry. And what she's like, did. get out, get out of here! I want you out of here! Like just like. Mm. Oh, just, I mean, it's just screaming. And, like, not to mention, Bijou is, like, this, like, little girl. And, like, I mean, I'm a pretty strong girl. My friend is, like, five foot ten. Like, and this little, like, chihuahua, I felt like, was just, like, <laughs> like, just, like, at us. And I'm just, like, oh, let, let, let. we just need the purse. We're leaving. I'm leaving. Please, like, give us space. So we get my friend's <laughs> purse. We, we get out there. And I'm, like, dragging her out. We get outside, and I sit my friend down on the curb, like, on these, like, little steps of her, his house. And we're sitting there, and again, this is 2005. There's no Uber, wow, okay? So back ago. then, I had a BlackBerry where I had to go through different taxi companies to dispatch to other drivers to come get us. And of course, they're like, what address are you at? And I'm like, Hollywood God, Hills? Uber, like, I don't know guys, where I'm at. Like, my that? friend how is just like the, passed how out. How old is the chat? I'm like, oh my how God. How old like, is the chat? This is so horrible. And it's like starting to get cold. And it's like 3, 4 in the morning at mm -hmm, this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm calling different taxi Been companies, there. and we're like sitting there and about 20 minutes later Danny and Bijou come <gasps> outside not knowing that we are still sitting there waiting for a taxi and I can hear her screaming at Danny like I know what uh, you're doing you think I'm stupid Danny's you think I don't know and at the time I'm like what does she woman think never was seen. happening like we were just trying to play poker and just go to the bathroom like what like what did we do wrong and she's going on and on about like you think I don't know you you think I don't know? And so this made me realize cabs, that I uh -huh. think even back then, she kind of knew. And I bet you there's did. more out there that probably have seen this. She did not seem surprised whatsoever about something that was happening. And I'm just like sitting there like, oh my God, like this is awful. I'm like trying to tell my friend, like don't talk. Like I don't want her to see, me, see us, but I can hear this full blown right rage fight that they're having outside of their house and i'm just okay, like oh let's my stop god it for one second because i do want to say back something inside well, and well, it is that, now that like, is an amazing tiktok by the way i can't believe it's more that's not more viral than it deserves to be but i do want to say really quickly the, the the patriarchy predatory behavior right um is a grooming process and as I look into it more and more as an adult, I've realized it starts from a very, very young age. And the patriarchy is groomed into us. So it actually creates a higher percentage of potential victims to predators. And I don't, I, I, I am listening to Bijou and I'm, I, I'm the Chihuahua scenario. And it's funny to laugh for sure. It's funny to laugh at her because it's ridiculous. And it's like, why are you doing that? And I'm not excusing her behavior because I actually don't think her behavior is excusable because there's enough education and information now for her to understand what the fuck is going on around her. But, let's say it, um, but at the same time, from my own personal experience, when I look at my grooming experience, I realized how groomed I was by the patriarchy, how groomed I was by predatory behavior. And I think all of us can agree to that even without essay, right? Capitalism, Western civilization, for example, their pressure into our worlds is a type of grooming process. And we almost get used to it. I mean, not almost, we do. We do get used to it. We're like, okay, we have to like have this much money in the bank account to have a roof over our head. We have to have this much bank account to be able to get coffee or groceries to feed our family. And it's a it's it's hyper normalization. That's what it is. Patriarchy has hyper normalized so many things that really should not be, and in my opinion, are extremely abusive and and dehumanize so many individuals. Um, so when I'm listening to her story, I hear what she's saying and I hear her critique on Bijou and her being a Chihuahua, but at the same time, this, this Chihuahua was groomed into being a Chihuahua, okay? <laughs> I know that sounds crazy and I'm not excusing her. I'm not excusing her whatsoever because as an adult, she has enough knowledge and information to understand what's happening. So I'm not excusing her right now in the present moment. And I don't like to use the word, but 
And at the same time, what's happening here is a grooming process. And, and so a lot of people think that grooming is something with a, an essay groomer with a minor, right? That's like the typical understanding of a groomer, but that's not what it is. A predator grooms in general. That's what a predator does. They groom everyone around them. They manipulate everyone around them and they get them to behave a certain way that benefits the groomer, benefits the predator, right? So as a side note, when it comes to e-predators, it's not just about essay. It's not. It's about the predatory behavior that gets groomed into us at a very, very young age. And I think we have many different predatorial behaviors. I would say that my negative thoughts, like when I have a thought during the day thinking, I can't do this. Like I can't make this YouTube and no one's gonna care about what I have to say, yada, yada, yada. That, that's predatory behavior. It's, it's, it's preying on my weaknesses, even within myself. And it's preying on that and hoping that I don't do that, right? So we all have predatorial, like predatorial aspects to ourself. Um, and that's why we have to recognize those aspects of ourselves so, so that we can re recognize them in other people. And when they become extremely unhealthy and dehumanizing, that's when we have to stand up to that type of, type of behavior. Because we all have it. It's true. We do. We all are a little bit of predatorial behavior going on in there, even against ourselves. Um, but it's our responsibility at the end of the day that when we see those behaviors being toxic or dehumanizing to an other individual, that we have to stand up to that and stand our ground and be like, check, no, 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 that's, that's not where it goes, right? So with Bijou, I'm not excusing her. And at the same time, though, I'm understanding how I was at 15, like, I know how I was at 15. I was, like, wearing a short skirt to get into the club because of the patriarchy. So let's just recognize that. I don't agree with Bijou. I have no excuses for Bijou. And at the same time, predatory behavior is extremely persuasive, and it, and it, it intertwines within the patriarchy, right? So, like, that's why I want to, like, uh, okay, it's, it's, it's definitely the patriarchy, but it's also predatorial behavior because I think women and men and any person that identifies with whatever gender they want to can be predatorial, right? So let's get out of the gender bias. Let's get into what predatory behavior is and how it damages everyone's life, including capitalism. So sorry, that's, that's my side note. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> thanks. I just wanted to like break that down because that's what e-predators is. We don't like any predatorial behavior whatsoever. We don't like it. Spirituality, where and, or humanness. I don't like spirituality because everyone has their own diff like different opinion on that. But humanness, your human body, that should never be preyed upon, ever. When that's preyed upon, that's somebody you go eat, in my opinion. Sorry. Actually, spirituality has been used for predators <laughs> um, because they want to take us out of our humanity into this other realm where we don't we can argue with one another about who's more spiritual. Let's not argue about that stuff. Let's argue about who's human. And that's everybody right on this planet other than the animals. Um, <laughs> and we're animals. So it's all of us. Um, but anyways, OK, what are we wanna, moving do through? Wanna, Sorry, do you want to finish so uh, the, the Bijou? So Bijou, I really hope that I have no. S was there an end to the story of the TikTok video? Yeah, I mean, I guess we can play it till the end. You guys want to pull it up and play it till the end? And thank you, Simi. Five in the morning, in the chat I keep calling, I calling my phone dies. We are sitting there out on this curb, huddled up together because we're so cold. And probably around 
20 ish a taxi drives by and i go running out just like here 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 and this taxi stops and we got in and we were finally able to get home now wow. the next kind of hours i get my friend into bed she wakes up she's like i don't know what happened my head is like killing me like this is wild i'm so embarrassed i don't know why and i'm like telling her like yo like they were like screaming and yelling like this was really bad like it, i don't know what happened either and like as these details are unfolding from these victims I kind of am almost grateful that Bijou did blow up on us like I think that maybe in some way she got us out of that house and maybe that was the best route even though the night was terrible and we sat on the curb till 6 and 30 in the morning it was wild and now it's all just making sense yeah in hindsight it all starts to make a lot of sense I feel like for all of us a lot of the traumatic experiences that we've faced start to make a, a whole lot more sense when we have time to look back at it and think about it, maybe even from like a, a healthier perspective when we have therapy, et cetera. I know that it was for me that um, when I started to look back, I was like, oh, okay, that's what that was. And oh, his behavior was not okay. And oh, my no mattered in that moment, but he disrespected that, right? So I'm with her. I'm with her. Also, side note, I, I, I kind of want to say something that maybe I shouldn't say. Should I say it? <laughs> no, and everyone's like, I don't no. know. What are you going to say? <laughs> no. Okay, anyways, just like I'm going to say it like briefly, like in the air, and then we just let it go in the air, right? Um, but I had a very similar experience with Lindsay Shaw. When I was 14 or 15 years old, um, I was at a party. It was Dan Simonis party. And there was like fruit punch, like, you know, those big bowls and you would like pour it in. Um, and we were all very young and definitely should not have been drinking. But I remember being at his party and um, I guess I got like her, like the girl that this friend is describing. And this guy named Matt Prokop picked me up and carried me to his car. And my friend Lindsay Shaw at the time was like, where's Alexa? And she ran out and she found, sorry. She found me being carried out by Matt Prokop. And she went on top of him and bit his ear. Legit bit his ear, like wrestler style. And she bit his ear and he was like screaming, but I was asleep. I don't even really remember any of this, but I remember waking up to him screaming um, and Lindsay on top of Matt Prokop. And I got free that day at that party. And so Anyways, that triggers like a very specific moment in my lifetime that I remember. Um, and it's really important as bystanders, you know, like not to be a bystander when these things are happening. Um, Lindsay went out there and she bit his freaking ear. <laughs> like he had like a little chunk of his ear missing. Like straight up Mike Tyson style, yeah. like hopped on, no fear. <laughs> she did. I'll never forget it. She bit on, she, I mean, she bit on, she hopped on and then bit his ear. Um, and she saved me that night or that day. So good this, friend. This, That's a very that good was friend. a good friend. We, we protected one another during that time against predators. Um, so anyways, watching that TikTok, I mean, I feel like we all have been that friend or we've been that other friend who is being preyed upon, right? We want to end that. We also want to end predatorology, too, don't we? We do want to end predatorology. So, guys, September 28th, the protest still stands. We're going to the blue freaking building. You know, I can't even believe I've dri <laughs> driven past that building so many times and have not tried to get that building out of Los Angeles. Like, it's such a crime, in my opinion, having this cult just, like, being there, doing its thing, Etc. Like, what is this? This needs to end. So, September 28th, 
we're protesting against Scientology, Predatorology, and I really, really hope to see a bunch of people physically there, but I also really want a bunch of people virtually there that can't be there, right? So we're gonna be live on YouTube during the protest, and then also we're gonna have a BTS version of it. And I wanna explain what our Patreon is. Can we pull up our Patreon? Because I just wanna explain, the Patreon was the first thing that, that got created, I would say, out of the E-Predators movement. Um, and it's really important to note because the Patreon funds go directly to the protests, okay? So it goes to sunscreen, water, um, these protest signs that are behind me. By the way, these are miniature versions of them. They're actually a lot bigger and they cost a lot of money. Um, so for us to go out there, we, we do need community because I don't have those funds. Um, so this is an example of what the funds go towards and it goes towards the activism aspect of e-predators. So I like to call it like streets to the screens um, and that's really what it's become at the end of the day. It started in the streets, it started physically outside of virtual reality and now it's on the screens and it's deep in the virtual world. But I don't wanna lose track or lose sight of the physical aspect of what e-predators is um, because we're in a grassroots activist movement and, and we're trying to make change in the streets, not just on the streets, on the screens, it's hard to say. Um, so yeah, so Patreon, if you're like, hey, I don't necessarily want to like donate to the Zoe 101 star, but I'm down with donating towards the activism aspect of what she's doing, great. We have a, a place for you to do that, and it actually makes a difference for us. Um, so there is a tier on our Patreon where yeah. we will physically send you some of our leftover signs. We have like True. a deep archive yes. of signs. So Get one of these. Yeah, you can. We'll be sending some of uh, the prints out um, for the Predators, the Art of Protest tier. So, yes. Oh, and, and, we, then, and we will be going live as well and uh, filming it. Some people we were, will. That's were what asking. We said. They, they were asking if we're going to be filming it. We outright. will. So there'll be the live version of it um, that's available to every single individual. We'll be live at this protest, and I will have security there. So Scientology, don't get it twisted. Um, <laughs> and here's the address. We're going to pull up just oh, yeah, the, address up the address for everyone in Los Angeles. Or if True. you want to come on down. True. Um, but also, side note, um, there is going to be a BTS video where we show how we make the signs, um, some interviews of the protesters, et cetera. And that will be kind of a give back to all of the Patreons that are supporting the live active aspects of Eat Predators Daily. So... And other ways to support, um, we have our merchandise. Up I was on just going to get website. into that. So we also have the T-shirts, and that will go more towards sustaining this because, like I said earlier, I don't know if I said this earlier, but I'm in a bedroom um, doing all of this. So I would like to eventually be out of this space and be in a space that um, my kids can roam more toward, you know, around the house while I'm doing this type of work. And so that's kind of a goal of mine is to get out of the bedroom and into an actual space where I can continue to, this, to do this advocacy work um, on screen. So yes, so when it comes to memberships, we're gonna change it. Is it from, is it $2.99 right now or is it $1.99? I'm sorry. It's currently $2.99. Okay, so members. currently it's $2.99 and that's gonna stay there for those people that signed up as a member for that tier but we're gonna raise it in the next week. Um, and so if you wanna get it at that tier, then sign up as a member, super helpful, and also you get to stay at that tier. Um, and then after next week, it's gonna raise up a tier. So just wanted to let everybody know, and thank you to all of our members um, that are the first uh, time members. Um, we're super grateful for you. And at the same time, next week is going to change. So if you wanna get it at this tier and help us support the production of the show, That'd be super helpful, and I'm super grateful 
Um, and to all you allies and alleged dads out there, <laughs> we're dropping this T-shirt tonight. Um, oh, so, yeah, the alleged. I'm, I can't even see what people are seeing, you oh, guys. A, I have no idea. I've seen myself this whole freaking time. I don't even know what everyone's seeing. What is everyone seeing? They're seeing the alleged dad T-shirt. Oh, okay. Well, I can't see it. So this will be available on our website later this evening. Alleged dad, yeah. I'll definitely wear that maybe in my next, not it's my a, next episode. Someone but called next. it an alleged ad. An alleged ad. It's an alleged ad. That, is. that is our segment. That's so true. Survivors are your uh, customers. So survivors are your customers. I, I do also want to say that Lock of Living has been an incredible um, sponsor to Eat Predators Daily. They're a matcha company. I really recommend all of you just to look it up, lockaliving.com. Um, they've been sending me tons of matcha while I've been <laughs> going through my postpartum and before. Um, and let's just say, like, it's really hard to get sponsorship when you're a survivor talking about these topics. Um, so we love to support any brand that is pro-survivors um, and actually puts their, what's the saying? Their, their money, money where, where their, their mouth, mouth is. is. Yeah. Like, we like to see that. Because honestly, I feel like survivors don't get enough support in the ad capitalist like realm. And I want to start reminding capitalism that survivors are your customers because one out of three women, for example, are a survivor of SA, right? And then it goes trickle down to every single other human being on this planet. So we're your customers. So help represent us and support us and... Um, Give us some type of visibility, right? Well, I, I think survivors deserve visibility. Um, and this has nothing to do with gender. Okay, this is survivors deserve visibility. So any brand that's willing to give us some type of visibility, I like to um, give them a round of applause. And so if anyone wants want to check out Lock of Living, it's, the, it's delicious. By the way, side we, note. The, the website is up and we're, we're pulling it up. <laughs> okay, for, but also for side note, it's actually delicious. It's actually delicious. And they're based out of Hawaii, right? Yeah, they are. They are. I think it's Kauai. I'm not sure where exactly where it is, but let's give them some support because a lot of people run from survivor advocacy and they did not. So thank you, Lock of Living, for thank giving you, me Lock the energy living. to, yeah, to the make show. pancakes in the morning. Yeah, totally. <laughs> thank you so much, Lock of Living. All right, so I guess we're getting to the point of the whole point of the points. <laughs> um, we're getting into, oh, thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you guys so much. This is so sweet seeing all of this. I'm, like, shocked. Um, thank you guys so much. So we're going into the, I guess, the main segment of the show. This is our first time doing it like this, so bear with us. Um, but we're going to the main segment. We're interviewing a a woman named Gabs who came into contact with Diplo when she was allegedly 15 years old um, on Instagram. And so leading up to that, let's just kind of give ourselves some breather to understand who Diplo is, what he's allegedly been doing, what's the deal with him. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen our Shelly episode, but I'm going to like spend some time in the chat for a second because I feel like I haven't spent enough time in the chat for a second. Who has watched the Shelly episode when it comes to Diplo? Anyone in the chat? I can breathe. And, we do, and we do have the video queued up if you want us to pull it up for you. Which video? The Shelly interview. Okay. Is there a particular moment you want to show from the interview? You know, yeah, I kind of want to mention, I, I kind of want to bring up the arbitration aspect sure. for her. So can we bring that up? And also take me off the screen for a second so I can stretch. Yeah. Let me know when I can stretch. <laughs> you are off screen. I'm off screen? Okay. Yeah, can we pull up that? There is a high, high chance of a fellow survivor coming forward alongside you and validating your experience after coming forward. So I just want to say, like, congratulations, um, Shelly, because 
Um, that's once in a lifetime for a lot of survivors to get that. And I'm sure that was extremely validating for you. In this newfound evidence, Diplo, allegedly, sends a image of you that is I'm um, without consent to a third party. Um, now, what happened after you got sent this evidence? Did you end up going to the, the police station? What ended up happening? Yes, yeah, so the same day that I got the new evidence that he did in fact commit that crime, I went to the police station and filed a police report. How did that um, unravel at the police station? Because as a survivor, uh, even when I went to the police station about Michael Milos with a bunch, a bunch of evidence of him me as a child, um, it just felt like a dead end uh, street, which I'm sure for a lot of survivors, it feels like that. Like even just going up and talking to an officer, you sometimes get an officer that looks like they are completely uninterested uh, in the crime that was committed against you. You get victim blaming, you get a whole bunch mm -hmm. of uh, uh, different reactions to you coming forward to the police. What was your uh, specific experience like there? Mm -hmm. This one wasn't that pleasant. But what I will say is the first time, so in comparison to the first time and now, um, it's interesting because I have more evidence now, but I got treated worse, essentially. Um, it almost seems like she already kind of just didn't believe me or maybe not didn't believe me, but it was a waste of her time. You know, she maybe she was having a bad day, I don't know. But in comparison to the first time, the police took a very, very detailed report. They took their time on it. Um, everything was detailed and laid out. In this one, she kind of just wrote revenge and was insistent on asking questions that I already know that she shouldn't be asking because it's the detective's job and not hers. But, you know, I, I tried to like the arbitration action. make it as okay. comfortable for me as I could okay. because I didn't want it to, it's, it's already an uncomfortable situation, so like up. having to like go up in there and like tell, mind you, there's other people in there and you have to like say what happened. So you're saying this person sent images and photographs and videos of me to someone else without my consent okay so i do recommend watching the shelly interview because am i on you're on yes okay so i would definitely recommend watching that interview because it gets a lot of insight on arbitration um litigation abuse etc um that a lot of survivors uh face right when they come forward. Um, there's a lot of silencing tactics that end up happening um, to survivors when they come forward within the justice system, right? And the justice system is supposed to be tax dollars. It's our dollars paying for that, right? But really what's ending up happening or ends up happening is that these survivors get silenced, they get bullied into silence, and then they also end up in arbitration agreements. Um, that no one can know anything about, which in my opinion is extremely disheartening and we wanna change that, right? We wanna change it. It's our first amendment right as an individual. Even though the patriarchy wrote the amendments, <laughs> um, it's our time to step up and go against the predatory aspects of um, that. Um, so, what I've personally experienced is, yeah, that's a backlash of speaking forward. And it definitely puts survivors into silence. And then we don't end up hearing what they have to say. Um, and with Shelly, in my opinion, it seems to be the case. It seems to be that Diplo is allegedly, in my opinion, silencing a lot of his survivors through this strategic um, litigation abuse, right? Um, so after Shelly came forward in her Sloan interview, she got in contact with an other survivor that wanted, wants to be a witness 
in her criminal case. And then after coming on to Eat Predators Daily, she ended up, well, I ended up getting a message from this incredible, incredible woman named Gabs, who had her own experience with Diplo when she was at the age of 15. 15, you guys. And how old was he? I think he was in his late 30s, like 37, 38. Um, we got to pull it up. Do we have her passport, by the way? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Adam's like, wait a minute. Miko left. What are the assets? Do we have her ID? Okay. Um, anyways, we're going to prove her age at the time when she was speaking to Diplo. And now she is um, a woman um, in her early 20s. And she has a lot to say about her experience with Diplo. And it's not necessarily good because she was 15. And this guy was in his late 30s, and he was messaging this 15-year-old girl, allegedly. Um, and yeah, so... Is there anything in terms of arbitration that you want to read about? Well, arbitration is... Oh, right. We Let's pull up the TikTok. A, we have a few links. Um, okay, so Diplo from... is such a dipshit, in my opinion, and I can say that because I don't care. Um, what are you going to do? Um... But anyways, dipshit basically said to this TikTok creator that he recorded Shelly talking in her arbitration. <laughs> um, I don't, it's not even a trial. What is it? I don't even know what arbitration is because it's not even real, you guys. It's not even real. But during her arbitration, allegedly, from Diplo's own words... He was recording Shelly during that time. And, and apparently, from my own knowledge, you're not supposed to do that, right? It's supposed to be a confidential experience. Um, but it wasn't because he responded to a TikTok creator saying that he recorded Shelly while she was in arbitration and that if they met up for pizza, he would show the arbitration recording. He said he couldn't show it unless they met up for pizza, which is, in my opinion, so sus. Um, it's just so typical um, behavior. This is in my opinion, and that's I'm allowed for that. So can we pull up those um, TikTok interactions with Diplo and this uh, TikTok creator? where he says he'll meet up with her for pizza? Yeah, of course. I was curious also, um, before we shift pizza. to our guests, there was an update with Shelly and where we can support her. Um, before we shift into yes, the GoFundMe. The GoFundMe, and then if you want to touch True. on... Briefly, just what's happened since her interview, just for a, a minute or two. True. Okay, you guys, so basically, typical situation... The alleged predator is now going after Shelly to silence her with a TRO. It got denied by the judge, obviously, in my opinion. Um, got denied. So, basically... <laughs> Do you guys hear Nova? She's like, let me in. Let me in. When you're older, you can come in. Um, so, basically, what ended up happening was... She got the TRO, got denied by the judge. Um, and now she has to go into a trial hearing for the full RO. Um, and it's terrifying. And that's this happened after she spoke on Sloan's podcast, right? So now he, in, in my opinion, from my own personal experience as a survivor, it's a silencing tactic. Um, to make sure that she is muted, right? And so that's what's going to end up happening if we don't, as a community, donate and give our support to her GoFundMe page. Show her that we actually care about Shelly, okay? I refunded everybody from the Brandon Quinn. So those who have been refunded, 
if you feel called to, please use those funds towards Shelly um, for her justice journey, because it's extremely important um, that we as a community show these alleged predators that we as a community are willing to support the survivors through, in my opinion, litigation abuse. Um, so do we have the GoFundMe up? Yeah, we have it up right now. Okay, cool. So let's donate. Let's show our support. And if you can't donate, you know, send her a message um, or in the chat right now. Let's show that we support Shelly. Um, let's show that we give her our support during this extremely horrific time in her life. I mean, she's just gone up against um, structures of power again and again and again from what I've heard from her and my own interactions with her. And as a survivor, I deeply resonate with that. Um, so let's give her some support. Her court date is in five days. She's going to be at the Stanley Moss courthouse. Basically and I'm going to be protesting her. it. We'll be so protesting we'll, we'll be it. there. So that she can we'll be have her voice. And, and another alleged predator can't silence a survivor. Correct. Through litigation, through our tax dollars, we should not allow, through our tax dollars, the silencing of survivors through patriarchal um, tactics, basically. Predatorial tactics that the litigation system really upholds, in my opinion. That's what it is. That is what it is, in my opinion. So it's time for us to either rewrite it or at least support these survivors while they go up against it, right? So um, please go over to that GoFundMe account. And even a dollar, even one dollar. Thank you. And Thank we, you. we have. And also, it's Brian Freeman, by the way. I don't know if anyone's seen my freaking other videos about Brian Freeman, but Brian Freeman's the one who represents Diplo, and he's alleged gang R word um, in college. And he represents a lot of these alleged predators like Diplo and my abuser, Michael Milosh. And so let's show him that there are many different survivors out there and allies that are willing to support these individuals as they go up against potential predatorial, I don't know, rules and laws. Let's show that we're actually challenging that and that we're willing to support that challenge. So and let's but, do it. And <laughs> one last um, public service announcement for our community and for survivors. What? I don't even know. Uh, the disapproval stamp. Mm. Okay, there's this lawyer named George Verbeck. Um, and he's like sliding into girls' DMs um, that are victims, alleged victims, alleged survivors of Diplo. And he's trying to represent them. And from what I've been seeing, in my own opinion, um, George Verbeck, if he's watching, um, it, it feels like he's more interested in the patriarchal aspects, the predatorial aspects of the law versus the justice aspect, the humanizing aspect of the justice system. And that's what I've personally been experiencing through screenshots, et cetera, so during this Diplo situation, if you get a DM slide from George Verbeck, which is a shitty cup of Joe, um, just know <laughs> that I don't feel like necessarily he has your best interest in mind. So he does not get the E-Predators daily approval. He gets a deny. Um, and we don't approve of George Verbeck on E-Predators daily. I'm sorry. And I'm not sorry. The um, chat is blowing up right now over his uh, George image Verbeck right now. is shady. And if you look him up, even in the media, he's shady. Um, and I don't like anyone preying upon survivors on their journey to justice. I especially view and look for that. And I don't like that. 
I don't like what I've seen. I don't like what I hear. And um, let's just say George Verbeck is a uh, deny on E Predators Daily. And we'll keep you updated when we have better lawyers that actually care about survivors, which is sadly far in between. Um, but my opinion, eh, a no. So to um, uh, the TikToks. All right, let's go. <laughs> Do you want to give a quick backstory as to how these messages were sent to you as we pull them up? Okay, so basically when, what was it? So when Shelly came forward on her Sloan episode, um, it started to spread, I guess, and people started to listen to her voice. Because you have to remember, I think... She was silenced through the arbitration agreement for years. Um, and towards the end, she was like, F it, right? She's like, my voice is more important than any of this, than any dollar factor. Like, I'm going to speak up. Um, and when she did on Sloan, then TikTok creators started to pay attention uh, to what she had to say. And I guess Diplo... In my opinion, if Diplo is watching, I'm sure his lawyers are probably watching. So hi, Brian. Um, remember me? Um, but basically, what ended up happening was he started reaching out to TikTok creators and actually responding to them. And in my opinion, that's like straight up narcissism. It's straight up the patriarchy. And in my opinion, it's also predatorial behavior. Because they think that they can just change the narrative with their, like, one text message um, to a TikTok creator. And also, maybe they think that the TikTok creator is going to be starstruck or something, right? Um, so, basically, that's what ended up happening. Diplo reached out to a creator called named Becca um, and started basically creating in my opinion, also a bunch of lies because some of them were actually proven a lie. Um, I can't go into it in this video, but like he was like straight up allegedly lying in these TikTok interactions, which is just insane in my opinion. Alexa, can you see them on the screen? You can read I can only see myself. Oh, okay. We're going to pull them up for you just in case you want to read some I of the do. messages. I do, but I'm also going to have to pull it up probably. Yeah, it's it's too small. Got you. Um, where is it? Is it in the docket or is it? Yes, it is in the oh, docket. Oh, it's in the docket. Okay. I see it. Okay. Wait, but I see I feel, I have different messages than you do. I have totally different messages. It has been pinned onto the top of the docket. Oh, it's up here, but like for some reason it's not. Um... Oh, I see it. Okay. It should be a video file that you can basically scroll through and, and let you read through. I can't read through that because it's ridiculous. I'm not even going to read through that entire. Is it okay? Is it safe for, for you to? Yes, it is. It is? Okay. Um. Can I pee really quickly? <laughs> Can I do it? Yes. <laughs> Will people allow me to do this? <laughs> I'm like, I have to pee so bad. We're going to take a quick commercial break. It's a quick commercial break as my bladder returns <laughs> empty. In the meantime, we'll throw a video up uh, from our channel. Yeah, you should. Oh, yeah. And if you have any questions at all, throw them in the chat. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Just a reminder, we got our Eat Predators uh, Patreon merch, merch store. 
and you can join as a member on YouTube. Three ways to support. We're going to pull up a YouTube video for you guys off our channel. All right. All we right. have uh, Marlo the dog queued up, and <laughs> there people are watching it. All right, I'm ready. Can you get help me pull up the video? Um, no, because I have it now. Wait, let me see. It's like downloading is a thing. So yeah, I basically. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Is everyone here? <laughs> Had to use the restroom, but I'm back. Um, so basically, Diplo, you know, thought it was chill to respond to this uh, TikTok creator named Becca who made this like deep dive into Diplo's past and current affairs. Alexa, can you turn off your flux, please? Oh, yeah. And if you want to make that full screen so people can see. Make what full screen? What you're looking at. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I don't know how to make that full screen my Diplo converse, I mean, the Diplo conversation with Becca. There's no way of making that even full screen. <laughs> F? No, we that doesn't you. even do that. Press the green button up top and oh, it'll okay. make it full screen. For you. There you go, perfect. Okay. Wait, this is too early. That's not even what I want, though. It should be a video that has the entire conversation to the left. There yeah, you go. Yeah, I see perfect. it. Perfect. Okay. And Is this all proofed? Yeah. And because then, he and goes into things that are not proofed by YouTube. And then uh, drag that over to the left. I can't drag it over. It's full screen. The player, the media player, you just drag it over. I, I, I can't. It. Oh, but it's full screen. It won't let me drag okay. it. It has to be f not full screen for me to drag it, you guys. So see, I have to drag it's it over. Player. Okay. Is, can you guys see it? Yes. Okay. You were saying there's something on here that's explicit material? I think so. So I don't want to full play this full video okay. because that's what I'm confused by. Okay. Um, okay. So basically, Diplo... I, I want to get back to what I was saying. So basically, Diplo messaged this TikTok creator named Becca trying to like defend himself, um, say that he's been harassed for this entire time by Shelly, um, et cetera. But my favorite, my personal favorite part about this conversation is this. 
And this is all we should really be pulling up, in my opinion, um, is this. Where is it? Why can't I open this, you guys? I can't even open this. Oh, I see it. It's right here. Let's pull this up. Why can't I pull this? Okay, there we go. Let's just pull this up so we can get into Gabby. Oh, this is not even it. Where is it, Migo? <laughs> I can't find it. You guys um, are delayed. It's right here. I don't have the image, though. Is it this image? Yeah, I'll just pull it up for the screen and you can read it. Yeah, that'd be really top. nice if you guys did that. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Where is it? I don't have it anywhere. Both things are I have audio recordings. There you go. It's up on the screen. Okay, here it is. <sighs> so Diplo says, I would love to see these other teen girls because I believe that's false. What, like Danny Masterson false? Like Michael Milos false? Like who false? Um, you love to, wait, you love to me. He can't even type. It's like Brandon Quinn too. He can't even type. You love to me mention multiple teens, but we both know that's just a lie or it would be public. Okay. Well, since Diplo, um, really would love to see these other teen girls because he believes they're false even though allegedly he was up in their DMs and Snapchat, et cetera. Um, I guess E Predators Daily is thrilled to show him these alleged teen girls that he was contacting and communicating with. Um, so let's bring on gabs the wonderful gabs i can't wait to speak with her she's wonderful she has so many informative things to say about this situation and i'm thrilled to um talk with her good luck with this zoom Bye. <gasps> gabs i hear you <gasps> oh wait am i able to see her on that screen why not Okay, wait, can you guys move, can you move this silver screen a little bit over? Gabs? Hello. Gabs! Hi. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, maybe move it a little bit more to the left. Can everyone see it? <laughs> everyone can see her at least, right? Right? Okay, good. Yeah, move that screen over. Wait, move it from the bottom. And then just move him over. Yes, move it more, 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 more. Yeah, that's perfect, that's perfect. Gabs. Hi. Welcome to um, E-Predators Daily. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to have you on the show. Um, and obviously, Thanks. I, I, I obviously want to go into a bunch of things before we get into Diplo, um, but I do want you to introduce yourself and let everyone know your name, um, you know, who you are, what your passions are. Oh, wait, what? They can't hear her? They can't hear you. It was connected yesterday, right? We're good? Okay. Can everyone hear her now? <laughs> Can everyone hear her now? No audio. Oh, they're catching up. Okay. So we'll just wait for a clear. Um, can't hear her. I don't know if I'm delayed. Am I delayed, guys? Or can they hear her? Oh, like a mic is covered or something, so she needs to be turned up. Oh, uh, okay. It's a Verizon commercial at this point. Can you, Can you hear me now? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, welcome to live, Gabs. Welcome to the live experience. It's insane. This is like brand new too. So we're all like figuring out what the hell is going on, honestly. I love her. Yeah, you're currently in like an infinite world of, uh, of browser pages. It's like impressive how many browser pages are open at once. You're in the matrix. I love it. Give us a quick take on what you're in the matrix. Wait, let me put. Oh, I see her. She's just like in multiple pages, you guys. Wait, how was it last night that we had her? Wait, why can't you make her full screen and why am I multiple different? You know what I mean? Oh, I'm just saying, like. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Wait, why am I am I frozen? I seem to be frozen. Can you uh, just give us like a quick check or talk to Alexa as we're boosting your gain? Oh, there she is. I see her full screen with me in the set. I, I see her with me. What do you guys need help with? Because I can help you. Because I know how to do this. Um, it's not in the upper left corner of Zoom. You don't see it in the upper left corner. Full screen is just the green button. You can't do anything other than that with Zoom. I see Patreon underneath me. But why am I so delayed? Oh, okay. No, no, I see. Apologies for the technical difficulties, everybody. No, no, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, I think we got her audio. Um, you guys can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Hopefully the Wait. chat can hear you. Everyone, if, if you can hear Gabs, please uh, give Let us a... Let me know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, so I can't comment. I got it. We're good. We can talk to her now. But I, can talk. I, I don't know where I'm looking at. I don't even know where she is. Oh, okay, there she is. Because mine's super delayed. Um, Gabs. Hello. Welcome to Team Predators Daily. I Thank you. apologize for the delay, but basically, as you can see, there's like a new setup and we're doing things very differently. Um no, now okay. on the live show. Okay. But I'm so happy to have you on the show. And Thank I you want for having me. I want you to introduce yourself, um, give us your name, you know, um, maybe the city of residence and also something about you that no one knows, like what your passions are or what you're currently doing when it comes to your passions. Okay, so I'm Gabs. Um, I live in London and currently we're juggling a lot of things, music, a jewelry company and wow. just video content so music videos you know the whole shebang <laughs> that's a wait you're doing jewelry too i did not know that yeah look it's our jewelry wait that's amazing i had no idea <laughs> you were making jewelry yeah this is our jewelry yeah. 
That's amazing. So obviously anyone that has heard anything about Gabs, we love to show support towards survivors or anyone that has been allegedly preyed upon. Um, so check out Gabs, check out, check out her music, check out her Instagram page, show some love and support because it's extremely brave of her to come onto the show and talk about her personal experience that we're about to get into. So Gabs, I just want to ask you, like, how did you find me? <laughs> how did you so, find me? <laughs> interestingly enough, I'm a massive H3 fan. So I saw right. your interview with him, um, with, well, the H3 group. And I was like, this woman is such a queen. She's a force <laughs> to be reckoned with. I was like, I need, and then you mentioned Diplo for a split second. And I was like, oh, my, my eyes lit up. I was like, yeah. <laughs> um so, <laughs> so then I followed you and then I was like waiting for the perfect moment and then I saw the video with you and Shelly and I was like this is perfect <laughs> so then that's when I messaged you <laughs> oh my god so wait so that's you, how it happened so wait you followed e-predators daily from age oh three. my god yes that's amazing yeah. and then you found the Shelly interview yeah wait I watched the whole thing See, this is the most important thing for survivors out yeah. there to know is like, this is the domino effect, right? Of survivors mm -hmm. speaking out and, and, mm -hmm. and talking about their experience. That's why these alleged predators want us to be silent because then we don't connect with one another, right? A hundred percent. You're on, you're onto it. I mean, literally yeah. like it is incredible what you're doing because <laughs> it allows so many people like pe you can reach across the world it's like global so thank you <laughs> thank you no that's so sweet thank for you, you to say i always forget <laughs> with e-predators youtube that you can go like a, you know into other countries i'm yeah. so protesting that i'm like yeah oh, okay wait i can go global and that's so true like i just think it's so important for survivors out there to know like this is what happens when you speak out like you can connect with other survivors and maybe mm -hmm. it's not a survivor um it's not a sister survivor right you know maybe not have the same predator but you'll meet mm -hmm. another survivor that can validate mm -hmm. your experiences and you can have a, yeah. a connection with them and that's so important yeah. for survivors to know yeah. um so gabs okay so let's i guess let's digest let's get into it what yeah when when did dip shit i mean diplo um, <laughs> <laughs> um reach out to you give us the whole situation we'll pull up the 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 messages right so i was I, at the time no i was 15 because i was born in the 2000s so i always know my birthday of at course. the end of the year i turn <laughs> the year that it is so i <laughs> if that makes that's like sense. my daughter she was born in 2020 so she'll always know what her age is she'll always know exactly always know it's a handy totally courtesy to, to my parents <laughs> but um i was at boarding school at the time and my best friend at the time again was obsessed oh am i cutting out yeah you're you're going in and am out, I cutting a little out? Bit, but it's okay yeah, you're going in, in and out a can little Can you hear bit. me now? I can hear Better? you. Better? Yeah, Sweet. I can hear you. Okay, cool. So I was at boarding school in England at the time, and my best friend was obsessed with Diplo. I had no idea who he was. I don't really listen to electronic music mm -hmm. um, at all. No judgment to people who do. That's great. I, you know, I, I do love some electronic music, but it just wasn't what I listened to at the time. And... Um, then she was like, oh, my God, because she she sent him a message being like, I love your music. And he replied very innocently, but still with he's replying to. You know what I mean? The intent is still weird. Uh -huh. Like, it's still a little bit bizarre that he's communicating with clearly younger fans. I found that strange. Um, and then so he went on her. I don't know how it happened. I must have been on her Instagram at the time and then he followed me and then that's when he sent me the message of the heart and pull it up <laughs> yeah pull it up pull it up, pull it up. <laughs> I, I, I want to see that I, I definitely want to see that there you let go. everyone see that there you go 
There, there we go. He wanted to see there all of these go. invisible, alleged um, teen girls that he was contacting. Mm -hmm. Well, here we go. Here you go, Diplo. Yeah. So you got what you wanted, Diplo. Yeah, you got what you so. wanted, Diplo. <laughs> <laughs> so then, obviously, I mean, you can read the chat, but he messaged me at the time. And what's so funny about this, so obviously I was underage in the UK, because I don't know if you're predominantly where your viewers are from but in mm -hmm. the uk the legal age of consent is 16 whereas in america right. it's 18 right. so it's kind of a sticky territory mm -hmm. but if you're messaging a 15 year old i'm assuming i mean kind of globally maybe not i don't know the global age of consents but it's creepy it's really weird and it's For illegal sure. um if it's within 10 and it was um mm -hmm. so then I got that message, and then obviously I was a fool, but I was little, and then I added him. You on were 15 years old. I know. You were legit 15. That's a child. And here's this like powerful dipshit coming in being like, I know. How old are you? Heart emoji, which by the way, yeah. gross. Second of all, he goes, ha ha, you're, you're laughing. Mm -hmm. Should we bring back the Brandon mm -hmm. Quinn video where he was like, bah ha ha. He's like, ha ha, yeah. you look 15. Why are you yeah. messaging anyone that looks 15? Yeah. Bizarre. Bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. And may I add that I had my age in my bio. And you guys know, <gasps> you know, when you're young, she guys, had you her. Age. Wait, you had your age in your bio? Yeah. Yeah, so he would have known how old I was. So that's why he was saying you look 15, because he was trying Correct. to say, like, not only are you 15, but you look it. Correct. <gasps> Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he really is a so, friend of Michael Milos, in my opinion. They really yeah, are uh, exactly. budding up in Topanga. Um, now I know what exactly. they have in common. That's bizarre. <laughs> um, now I see what it is. So yeah. wait, so so you message him back like does it look like a little bit later? Um it a looks, little bit later. Okay. I can't really see the dates on here, but I think a little bit later. And I obviously asked for his Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Um, because my friends were agging me on because they were obsessed with him and I wasn't. I didn't care for him. Right. Um and I, I just feel you on that. Clear. That's that's Sorry, another say thing. That again. Wait, can I just say side note? Like every message I've seen of Diplo talking to a girl, a woman, etc., he's like begging yeah. for them to respond. It's begging. like the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Like, begging. relax, bro. Like, if you have to beg this but, hard, like that's not consensual, by the way. Like, no. good morning. Uh -huh. Like, uh -huh. that's not consensual uh -huh. if you're begging for attention. It's uh -huh. it's ridiculous. Yeah. And do you know what's actually really interesting? Um, Tell me. I've been like looking up. I mean, I, I'm obsessed with what it means like to catch a predator videos. <laughs> and what I've noticed about, <laughs> about them is that they are absolutely enamored by like they like being blanked because they, they go crazy. They go crazy. Right. They're like, come here. Like, why are you ignoring me? Da -da 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 -da. And he does the same. And I noticed he did the same with Shelley, may I add. It's so true because honestly, really bad. they like feel offended and mm -hmm. turned on by the aspect. Yeah. Like it's yeah. they're such narcissists allegedly mm -hmm. that they have to like they love the the chase of it and and mm -hmm. having to earn some type of no notoriety. Like hello, yeah. I'm here. And it's like, yeah. do you understand it's predatorial behavior? And you're talking to yeah. a child, Diplo, allegedly. Mm -hmm. By the way, what's mm -hmm. up with the heart emoji at first like glance? Like, you just send a heart emoji to somebody who looks 15 years old? That is extremely mm -hmm. alarming. Uh-huh. Extremely. And like, even if... Sorry. No, go <laughs> ahead. No, go ahead. Even if... Can you hear me? I can okay, hear you. Thank you so much. Even if it, like, I was, I mean, you debate this as a victim. I mean, I, I, I struggle with feeling like a victim because obviously getting onto it, I didn't meet him in person, but I, I, I mean, I am because he had intent. Um, but what I was going to say is that like, it's, it's very difficult and like, it feels, it feels, it, 
again coming on here like me speaking I don't want anybody to think that I have like nefarious intentions in terms of like coming out and talking about what he said to me I want everyone to know that I'm doing this for number one for Shelley and number one number two for anybody else that feels that they're harboring information because if you're harboring information I know it's so difficult to come out but I, I know for a fact this man I mean he's an international criminal he needs sorry Am I no, no, no 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 you go right ahead girl Okay, but he is. He's an international criminal. Um, and he is so deeply disturbed. And, and, and his way of, of worming in to these girls' lives. And it's so easy because he has that platform. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, you disappeared. Are you still there? Can, you, can they see me? You disappeared. Oh, it's you can me, go. But... No matter no matter what, if you can't see me, you're good. You keep going. Okay, I'm good. Perfect. You're to you're so good, say... girl. You are a hero. You are an inspiration. <laughs> I mean, no, but like I don't I don't feel that way. But I'm just saying it's so you important should. that you know we all know that like these men will, as long as they're enabled and as long as people stay silent, they will continue. And I I don't doubt for a second that he has a roster. So I'm just leaving it at that. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I can't disagree with you because even yeah. when I, mm, so when I came forward about Milos, ironically, I remember someone messaging me, telling me that Diplo was doing a secular Sabbath um, show with him. And mm -hmm. I was like, wait, who, wait, Diplo? Like, I, I don't remember Diplo. I don't give a shit about Diplo, honestly. I've learned more Thank about you. Dipler, Diplo, Dipler, Diplo <laughs> through, through survivors than I did as, a, you know, outside of this, basically. Mm -hmm. And so I remember getting a message from someone saying that they're playing with Milos. And I was so naive. Actually, I wish I brought this up for in the Discord, was I messaged Diplo and I tagged him in this being like, do you know about my open letter? Because this was the day after my open letter. And mm -hmm. he read it and then he just kept playing. And then people started showing up in my DMs, young girls being like, when I was 14, 15, like, you know, this is their alleged experience, but these were the DMs that I was receiving, um, which was a lot of underage girls. It wasn't like, oh, when I was like, you know, adult, like this is what happened to me. It was very strangely a bunch of girls talking about their minor experiences with him and i was like what because that's what milo did to me i was i was i can't say the word here but i was g'd by michael milos and so i was like oh okay so this is maybe what's going on here like that's why they're friends um and it's just so true because the more they have a platform um the more they have support the more that they have financial support, especially, they're able to cruise for more alleged victims. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. just the truth. And mm -hmm. here you are in, in London. I mean, okay, so what was he doing there? Did he ever get to London? Like, what's the scenario with him in London? Like, please give me the full, I want to know what happened. So, okay, so after he messaged me on Instagram, there's kind of like a, a little bit of a time gap because I never like as a lot of the victims may know um he's persistent and I never ever fulfilled that persistence because I was just a, I was just in my own world mm -hmm. um it's got nothing to do with like it, it doesn't matter he has the power so whether you did meet him or you didn't it doesn't matter anyways um he was like oh I have a show I think it was a show. He just said he's in London. Pull up the, the show. Day. Wait, wait. Can we pull, pull up, the up the show? Because I actually oh, think I found yeah. it. I mean, allegedly, yeah. I think this is the show. Let's pull it up, you guys. Allegedly. It was allegedly a block party, which, by the way, that's what I got from DMs, was that his block parties were where yeah. a lot of these underage girls went, because I don't think there was an age restriction. Guys. 
it's like, okay, yeah, you're totally a white dude. That's the only reason why you've gone this far. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes, rah, 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 in his audio, in his own phone, he just goes, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> I like, make this a beat. It sounds like he's signaling an alarm against himself. <laughs> yeah. It's totally alarm. <laughs> that is the worst of dubstep, by the way. I remember the peak of dubstep, and let me just say that was not the good dubstep. Um, I enjoyed some what an dubstep. idiot. It's horrible. <laughs> so wait, so can we pull up that message again? Does he invite yeah. uh, an underage girl to hang out with him? Let's pull that up. I want to yeah. see that one more time because he yeah. he wants to see it himself. So let's show him if he's watching wherever the yeah. hell he is. Yeah. Yeah, you just zoom. It's it's out of video. Or is that the Snapchat, or the snapshot? I think I, I sent a video. You did. You sent oh, it all, girl. Said. You you sent it all. Yeah. And then he says, "Let's hide." So what does he say there? Can what, Miko? Can you read it out, or can Gab? Can Gabs read it out? Let's let's read it out. Mm -hmm. So he literally says, "Let's hang." Who the f <laughs> wants to hang out with a child? What? What? What possibly do you have in common? And with and, a child. And also just not a child, but someone who looks like a child, right? Because you uh -huh. love to confirm that you looked like a child. Uh-huh. Um, uh -huh. And that's what really also grosses me out. I mean, he literally uh -huh. confirmed that you looked like a 15-year-old girl when you were a 15-year-old yeah. girl. Yeah. And did he put Very the prayer strange. emoji? He put the prayer Sorry, emoji. Sorry, say that again. He put the yeah. prayer emoji. That's <laughs> ridiculous. He says, let's hang. Miko, am I right with that? Does he say, let's hang with a prayer emoji? Oh, Miko's delayed. Miko, can you hit your headphone out? Miko. Uh, there is no prayer emoji with the let's hang, but he does. Oh, I think there's a yeah. prayer where, emoji where with. Is the prayer emoji? I think I it comes it. with uh, the fact that he's confirming he's on Snapchat. Yeah, oh, he's like obviously. So he's like, please yes. be on Snapchat like, with me. Yeah, obviously <laughs> I'm here. Oh my God, no way! Wait, he yeah. has like he has the prayer emoji to Snapchat. Yeah, he's with like a 15 year old girl sending blessings yeah. to Snapchat in its platform for predatory <gasps> behavior, allegedly. Yeah, very uh, where, strange. Where is the chat with this? I, I, is it, I want to see what people are saying right now because I'm just so curious to. Okay, I see a vomit. <laughs> like I or I see like <laughs> pr pr uh, yeah, crying emoji. So wait a minute. So he he's down for you to go onto Snapchat. You go mm -hmm. onto Snapchat, and what happens on Snapchat? So I remember distinctly, and there's no wavering in my memory. Um, even though it was about seven years ago, he sent okay. I think it was slightly prior to him asking when to hang out in London, but he sent me a photo from his home, from his LA home, because it's the floor to ceiling windows, right? Um, in his, just com basically completely naked bar underwear, so lewd photos, <gasps> um, unsolicited, and I was 16. Yeah. So there you go. Well, what did he say in that? Did he just send the photo or was there any commentary to the photo? It was either, you know, knowing him, it was either let's hang, come to LA, come to Vegas. It's it's always one of those, that combination with him. Um, bearing in mind, I was never, ever eager. So he, he had to be so persistent. But sending pictures in your underwear yep. to, to a, a child. Yep. Mm-mm. No, Very yeah. Bizarre. What? How old is he again, guys? Can we look up how old he? Go onto his Wikipedia. Let's pull that full up and look at how old this man is. How old are you, Diplo? Are you going into your retirement home anytime yet? Because, <laughs> ooh, I mean, I remember him. I mean, he was so much older. Like I remember MIA, and he was so much older than our age group. Like so much yeah. older. Yeah. Is he older than yeah. Milos, Miko, or is he the same age as Miko? I mean, Milos. <laughs> I'm looking it up right now, but we are pulling up a tweet if you want to read that one out, Alexa. Which one? I have the to best go. One. Look on. Oh, okay. You can't just pull it up without telling me because it I says, won't be able dude's to see. swag starts at like 50. 
girl oh, yeah. just did after like 17. Yeah, yeah. Let me read that myself because hold on. Let me go through it. Where is it? Oh, is this the Twitter? Yeah. Okay, I see it. Okay, I mean, I which one is it? Because I just see a whole bunch of... Uh, oh, here we go. Okay, so Diplo basically says in 2010, before the Me Too movement, you know, when men predators were just like roaming around, being super honest about themselves, allegedly. Um, that's That was that era, in my opinion, was 2010. I grew up in that era. I know all about that era. <laughs> Um, and it wasn't good. It wasn't freaking good. Um, but Diplo apparently says dude swag starts at like 50. Girls just old after like 17. What are you, Mickey Avalon? Like, first of all, <laughs> the first thought that comes into my mind, you might be a little bit too young, actually, Gab Snowbuck. <laughs> Mickey yeah. Avalon. But Mickey Avalon was just disgusting, in my uh -huh. opinion. And he just made raps, like white guy raps that made no fucking uh -huh. sense. You didn't know what uh -huh. the hell he was saying. And it was all misogynistic and like uh -huh. just gross. Um, uh -huh. But here's Diplo. He can't, he doesn't have, I don't know, do you take grammar? I'm not sure. But he says, dude, swag starts at like 50, <laughs> girls just old after like 17. So what? You uh -huh. mean before the age of consent, Diplo? Is that mm -hmm. what you mean? You mean girls are old after the age of consent in your country? Is that what you mean? I mean, may I add? Even I just want to know. Like, you should come on to come on to the show and confirm that. It's so bizarre. Even if wait, when was that tweet made again? It was 2010 when the patriarchy was super hard and strong. Right. <laughs> right. As you know, as you say. But <laughs> even in 2010, that is a non, we say in True. London, a noncy thing. Like True. that's a really creepy thing to say. It's true. Like, as, true. yeah, like minus the pay. I mean, I, I understand it was a completely, I mean, completely different, but also it's like perpetual. Um, So creepy. No, you're so completely creepy. right. Something to remind the audience is no matter what year it was, <laughs> Diplo, it was <laughs> illegal to reach out yeah. to a minor child by the way mm. it doesn't matter if it was 2010 or if it was 2020 or if it was 21 mm -hmm. 22 no matter what year you're picking bro it, it was the wrong year <laughs> um for that yeah. maybe you'd have to go to like the 1600s where women were just enslaved <laughs> by the way um then maybe you'd be able to survive whatever the hell you're doing here but not in any current era diplo that is not um okay it just it just isn't <laughs> and also i don't like that you're saying that we're just old um after 17 what a fuck you you know what you're old right now diplo and look at your reputation as an old man right. i'm just right. saying you're an old guy and look at your freaking reputation you're like fighting tro's currently and look at your life how dare you say that women are just old over the age of 17 I find that offensive as a mom and as a woman. I find that extremely offensive. Go fuck yourself, Diplo. That's ridiculous. Correct. That's, I'm sorry. I had idea. to say that because I actually, the more I read that, I actually got more aggravated. You're a misogynist. You're a sexist and you're gross as fuck to me. Mm -hmm. Gross as fuck. That's mm -hmm. disgusting right there, bro. Disgusting. Mm -hmm. And you're saying mm -hmm. like literally the age before consent is like where your line is of like how old somebody is. And you're trying to defend yourself saying you're not a fucking predator. That's disgusting. In my opinion, that's just disgusting. In my opinion, that's crazy to me. You have too much privilege right there in that tweet. That tweet has come no. to haunt you like the ghost you are. And look at that tweet. You're literally saying that a swag of a woman ends at 17? I would like to say the swag begins <laughs> at like 22. <laughs> That's my, my mom take. I'm like, I didn't even feel like I began to be a human being fully until I was like 22. How old are you mm -hmm. Gabs now? How old are you? I'm 22. 22. Okay, so are you feeling yourself now? Like compared to like when you were I, younger? I can't put it into words but it's like when you reach there's like a there's like a point where you reach mm -hmm. and you just start to have this deep 
you know, brewing anger with like, I mean, every woman is a universal experience. We all feel the patriarchy and like, totally. whether it's somebody that's in power, somebody that's, you know, of privilege or somebody that isn't, mm -hmm. we all feel the heat from men. And it's like, totally. understanding that and, and living that every day is such a painfully mm -hmm. disturbing and like infuriating experience. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I get that. I get it. Yeah, like I didn't even know that I wasn't like allowed to like be, I don't know, preyed upon <laughs> until I was in my 20s. Like I didn't even Literally. understand. Like I thought it was like, oh, you're a woman, you're sexy. Like you mm -hmm. are for men. Like I know that sounds so ridiculous. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening being like, what are you talking about, Alexa? But that's what it felt like being in the early 2000s. No. Sorry, yeah, early 2000s as a minor was, I was like, I had to like present myself to men. Like mm -hmm. that's really mm -hmm. what it, it, it felt like. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't seem, it, it was so out of the scope that that was wrong because of how much the patriarchy dominates our culture. Mm -hmm. No, you know you're so I mean? correct. And it's like a deep conditioning from the age of, I mean, I was watching the whole live, but it's like from the ages of zero, you're conditioned yep. to be complacent. And it's so disturbing, like being preyed upon. I remember going away in Europe when I was, I think about 12 years old and I had men taking videos of me mm. on, on public transport. How disgusting. There's no, there's no words. So yeah. I felt that in Mexico as well. That yeah. happened to me as well when I was 16, when I was in Mexico, there were like guys like walking by selling jewelry and then filming mm. me when I was in my swimsuit. Mm. I remember that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And it's like, that's just what that that's the predatory behavior that most yeah. w girls are are bred into. And yeah. so when they're like, why didn't you come out sooner? Or why didn't you say no? Like the exact word no. Well, let's mm -hmm. look at our culture, man. It's a grooming mm -hmm. process since the age of zero that we're growing mm -hmm. up in. And we're mm -hmm. like literally having to think that all we are is our body, right? Yeah. That's all we yeah. are. And yeah. I got a more vessel. I got more requests for nude than UDS than I did for like my opinion about things or what my thoughts were. I don't know what your generation was like, but was N U D E S um popular uh, in your oh era? Oh my god. So Alexa, so I went to boarding <laughs> school. So the, the the boys yeah. that go into other boarding schools yep. have this level of entitlement that's so beyond, you, you can't even comprehend it. The, you know, these are the men that go, well, boys that are bred into politicians. So right. they will, they, they persist, they persist, they persist, and they'll save nudes, the girls. Oh, and you, you know. Yeah, mm. it's okay. You go, go, you go, girl. They'll send photos <laughs> that you send them around. Yeah. And it's disgusting and they'll they'll keep them they'll save them and they'll, they'll laugh they about save and they'll them ugly yeah yeah listen okay that's another yeah. thing so justin long is like obviously a no-go for us um and i'm just gonna put that there as my like <laughs> sorry i have to i'm gonna mention justin long long in this <laughs> but the thing is is that guys literally save ex-girlfriends n-u-d-e-s mm -hmm in their mm -hmm. phone and you have to understand like once that's no longer a reciprocal relationship right that has to be deleted because it's no longer consensual men don't understand that that consent changes through time they think consents mm -hmm. forever like it's like a billion year contract like scientology yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you say yes <laughs> once and it's just stand still yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. you're like you yeah. you have it forever my body <laughs> like men just want to think that like it's forever and it's like no it's not forever <laughs> it's during the time that you and I or you and that person were in this dynamic. And then mm -hmm. after that, you have to delete that. Like, I don't have any, I literally even at, like once I like broke up with certain dudes and they sent, you know what? I was like, delete, like, I don't even like it. It, it feels kind of embarrassing, deep Yeah, hits. no, 100%. <laughs> deep hits no, are weird. Deep they're not as, they're not as good. <laughs> like deep hits <laughs> are just like awkward. I'm like, 
Okay. Cool, bro. I'm good. You're just trying to egg me on to send my own. And I see what that mm -hmm. is. And like, okay. But mm -hmm. th that's, that's it. And after that, you mm -hmm. have to delete those photos. It's no longer mm -hmm. consensual patriarchy for those mm -hmm. things to be on your phone. And then what mm -hmm. happens if a leak happens, right? Like, if someone leaks into your iCloud and now they have the access to those photos, that's revenge P. Um, mm -hmm. So it's super, it's just so interesting to see how the times have changed and people think that we're being super progressive, but really we're just actually destroying the patriarchy. <laughs> it's not progressive, it's destroying the patriarchy that's been reigning for a super long time that has everybody super confused about what's happening in their lives. Um, in my own life, you know, as a, as a mom, I have to think about those things. So wait, okay, sorry, I'm going on a rampage because no, I'm talking about that. Okay. Um, but wait, can you please, sh uh, show your, your, your Snapchat experience with, with Diplo so we can see his stupid avatar? <laughs> oh, I just want to see oh. the, the Snapchat. Wait, Mingo, can you pull that up? Yeah, yeah. one moment. So, so as of recent, You've mm -hmm. been still friends technically online with mm -hmm. with him on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. So there are two generations, right? So he added my old Snapchat, the one that I had since I was like 13. Mm -hmm. And then I terminated it for, as you so can imagine, just can see boys it. pestering, being of annoying. Course. So I got rid of it. And then I made a new one and he added my new one. Um, but in my old <laughs> one, when I was 16. Wait, 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 wait hold on. He added yeah. your new one? How did he add uh -huh. your new one? He added my new one probably around the time, uh, I'm trying to think, maybe 27, yeah, it would be 2017, so about the same time. And he, yeah, so then that's how we're still friends. I don't use Snapchat anymore. Um, I use WhatsApp. I use, <laughs> yeah, you know, WhatsApp. I Signal. message. Yeah. So I, it's weird. Um but he had me, and also he had his snap maps on. Like, I could see his location at all times. Pull which that is up. Really Guys, pull that up. I want to see yeah. um, Diplo and his avatar. Was that real time when you sent it to me? Yeah, so I, if it's the video that I'm thinking, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, that one. His, you can see his avatar. Okay, everyone, look at this. There he is, there's dipshit. <laughs> She's just apple. walking around by the water. <laughs> what water is that, bro? Okay. <laughs> Wait, so you can literally see where everyone yes, is at all times? Yes, that's what Snapchat is. Criminals. Yeah, but he he's silly because he shouldn't keep his location on being a public figure. Correct. Like, that's insane. That is insane. So there you go. He was at the airport. That's me having his Snapchat. Um... Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Diplo, th I think this is, I feel like this is the time um, to ask you to come on to, uh, I don't want to be near you, actually. I would like somebody else to handle it, because I don't want to be fucking near you. Um, but someone else can handle you, and you can come on to E-Predators Daily and do a lie detector test, even though those are legit freak. <laughs> Wait, can we put that guy, <laughs> by the way, that handles this lie detector test? But you can come on and um, say that you did not or did whatever the hell you want to talk about um, under a lie detective test because I'm so curious um, to personally see what the results are when you discuss scenarios like Shelly's and Gab's. Um, and Snapchat and Instagram DM. I'm just curious to see what happens there because you seem to be very confused um, and it seems like you need some help. So I'm willing to give the help. You can come on to a lie detector test um, and talk about the fact that you were discussing I, I, I'm like so, I can't even, I hate doing this, Mingo. <laughs> I haven't say like, 
Yo, you were talking to a 15 year old girl. I'm pretty sure it's real. I'm pretty positive it's real because I saw it and I saw the screen recording and it like seems super real, bro. And then you're literally hearting her, bro. And like saying that like she looks 15, bro. And like liking that, bro. And that to me is fucked up. Like legit mm -hmm. fucked up. That's also a mm -hmm. crime, by the way. That's what Milos mm -hmm. did to me, bro. And he went a mm -hmm. hundred steps further and like, Fuck it. You are yeah. shit, Diplo. That's shit, man. And you mm -hmm. have the nerve to say, like, your kids are, like, taking, like, thirst trap photos of you. Dude, you were legit sending thirst trap photos, apparently, to minors. And are we okay with that? Can I see the, the chat? I, I, I'm sorry. I'm having a little bit of a brain breakage during this because I'm so... What, what, yeah, you go what, what, what is going on? We just pulled up the image of uh, Diplo. I, he forced his children to take his thirst yes. trap photographs. There it is. Can you guys show it? Okay. He would so cancel their return the tickets. Am I on the screen? Am I on? <laughs> yes, you are. When can I be off for one second so I can just cuss on the side? You're off right now. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck man There's i'm sorry this is the, the weirdest thing i've what ever read fuck? in my life <laughs> i'm gonna jewel actually can you go back so i can just jewel properly okay you can go on yes yo like this is a grown man messaging a a child saying she looks the age that she is so can we pull up her passport guys yeah like can we pull up the fact that she is the age that he's how's the chat doing by the way i'm sorry i haven't seen you guys in a second so i've been so freaking disgusted by this like what's going on how is everyone feeling about this? How are men feeling about this? How are boys feeling about this? I fall asleep right, they're like, time. I'm not going to answer that because I did that. Because you were groomed by the patriarchy. Like, it, that's a reality. Dude is disturbed. Mm -hmm. My mom says shouldn't be around kids. I agree. Your mom's correct. Yes. My tummy hurts <laughs> is one is one comment. My tummy hurt. I still can't get over the idea that he has the locations of people that are on Snapchat. That's guys. That's look at the passport. God, the phone. No, your phone is <laughs> rad. Like, I mean, whose passport looks like this? By the way. Like, Goodbye. My photo is demented. You look, <laughs> <laughs> you look great, girl. You look great. You look great. But look at her age. There you go, 2000. Diplo, look at her age. It's so easy math for you since you're from Florida or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, no offense to Florida, but like some of the white dudes from Florida are like legit, like ridiculous, right? We can all agree with that. I'm not saying like everyone from Florida is like that, but the white dudes from Florida that are like, you know, the ones that we don't want to hang with, those are the ones that can't do the math. So let's show them the math. You were 15 years old. Yeah, 15. Oh, and we haven't mentioned the fact that Tell me. he invited me to his hotel. Mm. <laughs> That's the pinnacle. <laughs> wait, sorry. I just legit <laughs> joked up on Jucha. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He invited you to his hotel. What hotel was his it? His hotel. So he was, I'm pretty sure he was staying at, I'm not going to name the hotel, but he was staying at a hotel near in my area um and he let me know and he was like Come. what, what hotel do you think it was because let's pull up diplo at that hotel by the way currently recently Wait, in, in 2019 i found it oh yeah i found it girl okay don't worry it's i found up. it <laughs> coming right up it's coming right up <laughs> Weird that Wait, the, the so woman amazing. in the photograph wow. is covering her face like, yeah, she, no go. one wants there to be go. seen with him. That's like the situation. Seems go. like a common trend. There you go. Okay, so is that's, that the hotel? That, that's the hotel. Chilton Firehouse, yeah. Mayfair. That's it. And he invited me there. 
With the intent of what? Just playing video games? No. <laughs> <laughs> no bros trying to play video games with no. Any... No, uh -huh. no, no, no. And no girl wants to play video games with any bro, to be quite honest with you. I mean, sometimes it's true, but if there's an age difference, <laughs> if there's an age difference, there might be a little bit of hesitance about playing yeah. video games with those bros. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is the so future guys... I'm scared about for my daughter. You know, like, yeah. This is the future. That with with virtual reality, like this is the, this is it. Um, mm -hmm. Like predators have access to mm -hmm. young girls. Um, yeah, through virtual reality. Yeah, and are we gonna stand for that? Like this is okay. We have to understand. Like also, by the way, I know that like guys like to say like in the fifteen hundreds, like. That's when bros were be were able to like marry twelve year olds, and it's like that was the patriarchy full on reigning, bro. By the way, like that was not okay. Children, your brain doesn't even develop fully until you're what twenty six, guys. Adam, Miko. Uh -huh. I mean, I want to get Adam in on this because Adam just recently talked about the fact that he doesn't want to date anybody under 25. And I think that's interesting and also admirable. <laughs> um, Adam, come on through. Tell sure, me sure, tell me why sure. you're I'll only you willing my, to date a 25 year old. Experience. Um, yeah, just date. Just I mean, <laughs> dating a girl that's I mean, it depends on your age. Obviously, I'm, I'm 34 now. And, you know, when I was a little younger, you know like 25 24 when i was you know when i was in my close to close to 30 now i'm like now i'm now i'm 34 and i could not i could not even see myself dating anyone you know in the in the late 20s mm. you know maybe late late 20s but like mid mid early 20s hell no that's just awkward it's just awkward. like there's what are we connecting on what are we connecting on dude adam just said wait by, by the way his name is stream dream and Stream Dream just said that what are we connecting on? I mean, that's so true. What are these bros connecting on? Like, what are you connecting on with these girls that their brains haven't even fully developed? And I know that boys are later, right? So it's like 25, 26 for girls, and it's 27, 28 for boys. What are you connecting on? What is it? And if somebody looks 15, which Diplo loved to heart that, bleh, I'm sorry, bleh. Like that's so freaking gross, bro. I would never heart to a, I can't even say this because it's so gross. I would never heart the fact that someone I was talking to looked like a child. Yeah. I mean, you know what's interesting also? Tell me. me and my friends have this conversation quite often because I I was watching the whole the whole pod and earlier you were mentioning <clears throat> how women were getting can you can I say the word roofied? Roofied? Yeah, yeah, just spell it out. <laughs> R-O-O-F-I-E-D. Wow. There you go. Roofied. I know girls that <laughs> so were you get willing. It. I know girls that were willing to do that because of the patriarchy. Right see see that's even worse yep. so when they were getting you know um it really i mean it's obliterated it's, what's the word Ob obliterated obliterated yeah 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 it's really i mean yeah it's it's really i can't use the words that i want to say because it's so mm, right but you continue continue and then i'll figure out how to say basically it. <laughs> i mean i'll just say it like there have been many times where i've gone to parties right and yeah. people have parachuted the word parachute yeah. um yeah. and that's like you look it up i'm not going to say it on here but everyone knows what parachute is if you don't just google it um mm -hmm. but girls were getting parachuted and then men were or boys were thought to think that that was a, con a consensual experience with them mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. isn't man it just isn't okay when someone's under the influence influence unless they are 
partners with that person mm -hmm. and they've agreed upon the fact that like okay we're doing this substance together and like you know i, I don't want to get nitty-gritty i don't want to be the person the, the mom and almost famous <laughs> um <laughs> but like that's really what what ended up happening and a lot of guys yeah. thought that because they were giving somebody the d-r-u-g-s um, and they wanted it or were accepting it, that it was okay to have a, a, a S, a, an S a experience with them. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's not mm -hmm. true. I, I I'm sorry to like inform everyone. Like if you just met somebody and you're, I, I I'm not even seeing, I'm not even saying like anti certain things here, but when you're experiencing a girl or a woman on these substances, like her reality is not the same. And so therefore, like, how can you say that that experience is necessarily consensual? And I know a lot of guys wanna be very upset about that. And that's okay. Listen, you can also admit to it and repent for it at the same time. I don't mean repent in a religious form. I just mean like, okay, I've learned this now, and now I see it this way, and I didn't understand it that way, and that's okay. Like, just admit, like, b allow yourself to be human. Like, allow it. Allow yourself to be human, because that's the only way we're going to be able to evolve. If we don't admit ourselves as human, we can't do it. We, we, we legit can't do it. So just evolve with everyone when it comes to men, boys, and it's okay. You saying you're sorry and taking accountability for what you did is okay in that sense. And it, it's up to the victim or the survivor to accept your apology. That's out of your control, right? It's out of your control, but at least you're doing that step. You're being human and you're allowing yourself to understand what's at place. All the things that are against yeah. you, how you grew up in the certain society. Also, that you, grew up in. Alexa. you know what I mean? Oh. Like, I don't want to be like, sorry, I, I just I want that. men to like not feel, I just want men to not feel like, they're being persecuted for the things that they have been groomed into. It's wrong. It is. It is wrong. It is wrong. But you can get, you can admit that. But do you, you know can... what Fs me off? Tell right? me. <laughs> Tell what me. Fs me off is the fact that, okay, could you imagine putting yourself in a situation, right? You're at a party. No. You meet somebody yeah. you really like. No. right a boy yeah. a man yeah, that you no. really like and he's absolutely obliterated would you proceed no no There's no never i know, I know no so know. it's it's really difficult for me to sit here and be like you know i i, I so wholeheartedly understand and so agree with what you're saying but it's no, just but so you're right. difficult no but you're it's right difficult but that's also you know? because we're not groomed in that way you yeah. know what i mean we're just not groomed yeah. in that way way yeah. i have to say the word i'm sorry i don't even care yeah we're not it's more important for people to hear it women yeah. aren't yeah suspected of being like that we know that that's mm -hmm. wrong mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that's like unattractive almost like too Ooh. masculine right mm -hmm. and it's like that's that's the the, the truth in that scenario and like mm -hmm. you're right you're totally right no matter mm -hmm. what indoctrination i'm getting i wouldn't be that person to do that and you're Never. totally you're Never. totally right which is why that's a predatorial behavior but i think predator predators really get the boost from the patriarchy the patriarchy is the boost for the <laughs> for for the predators you know what i mean it's the boost and it's like when that boost doesn't actually happen then there'll be a lot of boys and men i think that will be like uh that was, n I can't believe that was what I was thinking. That's what I was doing. You know what I mean? Like, 
I just yeah. do feel that way a little bit. Just from like guys yeah. and boys that I've experienced in my lifetime. I've learned that. Can I give a word of advice to yeah, sure. the men out there? Um, the men some, out there. And what I'm the witnessing is, in the boys that, like, please do not weaponize your genitals whatsoever. Like, True. looking at your body as a weapon. Like, True. I'm seeing from the Brandon Quinn and from Diplo, like, the way that they communicate. Pull it up. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. Hold up. Pull it that, up. Yes, do we have that, it blurred? Yes. That, like, you want. Pull it up. Pull like, it up. Fear to be implemented in your wait, dynamic wait, 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 with your body wait, 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 wait. with another Hold person. Up. Sorry, Mika. Sorry, okay. I have to disagree with you in one thing. It wasn't just the fact that he was trying to weaponize his, you know what? It was the fact that he was a white guy talking to a black girl. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And what did he say? What did he say? You want me to read it? Bleep it out. You're but afraid of big white. D. D. Mm -mm. Uh uh. That's disturbing. That was basically like Brandon Quinn when it came to him saying, Are you afraid of men? When any guy is having to tell a girl, Are you afraid of blah, blah, blah? Should I be? And it's and not you, the only I time I either. Should. Not the only time either. There was another message he sent someone when he was 41 years Shelly. old. Shelly. This is Shelly's uh, Instagram, dude. And it's in regards to his age. Look at what it says. Or allegedly. Diplo, come at me. I don't care at this point. Like, look at what you're saying, man. <laughs> Wait, this is absurd. And it's not funny. I just can't believe he thought that I know, this was. I know, I know, I know, I understand, send. but it's not funny. It's not funny. What is that? Mm -mm. <laughs> what the fuck is that? What old illegal activity is what? Diplo. What is it? Is that phone number your phone number, by the way? Let's look it up. Let's look it up, bro. Is that your phone number? Is it? I don't care. Is it? Because I want to know if that is. Because if you said that to somebody, that's disgusting. In my opinion. Um, okay, so... Gabs, where are you at now with everything that you have come across, understood, et cetera? Where are yeah. you at? I mean, so it's difficult because, again, I have this level of guilt in, in, in the respect that I didn't physically meet him. And there's like no, there's none of that, you know, there's not, none of that element. But I... I'm so determined because I know, as I mentioned prior, he's an international criminal. He is, I would like to say, probably on par with R. Kelly in terms Ooh. of how disgustingly, I'll say it, Ooh. I don't care. I've heard so much dirt on this man. He needs to be stopped. He's disgusting, like genuinely. And like, speaking to obviously you and Shelly like has has brought a second wind in terms of like I was scared before to come out not because of who he is I'm not afraid of celebrities but because mm -hmm. I thought that people would think that I'm like career boosting because obviously I'm a musician I didn't want anybody to think that oh you know she's coming out and trying to be no that's not that that's not the case at all I there's no I don't need any gain from this other than getting him put in his place and having other victims come forward that's it so that's all i gotta say so what did you do the other day did you uh you know what i mean where'd you go with yeah. your brother you mean today yes so i yeah i decided to file a police report in london against him because I, even if not, nothing comes from it, it is public record and 
it means that both me and apparently both me and Shelley can cross reference. I don't know how it works. I don't know the fucking jargon, whatever. But um, yeah, I filed a report against him for grooming. So there you go. Yeah, because that's where that would deserve to go. Um, yeah. In that yeah. scenario, that's exactly where it goes. It goes and you know into... what's very validating, may Tell I add? Me. Yeah, add is it. What was really lovely was, first of all, I had a female police officer. Um, and second of all, she was so, so reassuring. Oh, frozen again. Yeah, no, it's okay. Go ahead. Frozen. Just say it again. I'm back. Okay. Anyways, she was very, very reassuring in terms of, you know, she was like, how many people has he done this to? And I was like, you know what, more than you can imagine. Um, more than you can imagine. And you could tell that she had daughters. Um, so she didn't care that I hadn't met up with him. And that was the, the validation that I needed because it doesn't matter that I didn't meet up with him. He is, he had the intent of sleeping me with me when I was 16 years old. So there you go. When you were 15 years old. 15 years old. 15, no, you know, you're right. 15 years old. 15. So, there you go. He hearted the there fact you. that you looked 15. Mm -hmm. He thought and he it was more life. attractive that you were 15 years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that... At E Predators Daily, we don't approve of. That's nope. um, that's a stamp we don't we don't give for someone mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. That's just beyond disturbing. Yeah, Not really, it's really terrible. It is terrible, terrible. because I don't want to. And think, I feel like I don't sometimes think. there's like a cutoff period where it's you don't want to call somebody a pedo. Yeah. In terms of like. But but you are, if you're preying on children, you are that specifically. So he is that. And he has like an affinity for ethnic women, which I am. Um, and it's disgusting because that's like a level of protection that we, well, obviously the darker skin you are, the less likely you are to receive protection, but we don't get that. So it's it's so profitable for him in terms of like preying on us because it's like he won't get caught right basically right so there you go all right diplo i know that you're probably not watching it because you don't uh -uh. have time for that um but your lawyers are probably watching and you know in my opinion man this is not good this is just horrible as a mom and as a survivor um It'd be great if this wasn't true, but it's for you to prove that, right? Um, so now the torch gets sent off to you and you have a response to make to what Gabs is saying. And I hope you choose wisely and I hope you don't stay in the narcissistic spiral that you're in and I hope you take accountability for your alleged actions and i hope that you just become a real human being man that'd be awesome be cool to see real human beings in the world right and not ones that try to hide behind their privilege that would be super great um so gabs thank you so much for coming on here and i just want to sh put her instagram her music, et cetera, in the comments. Let's support the survivor that has been <laughs> allegedly preyed upon. Let's give her support. Let's show that we adore her because I think she's amazing. Um, let's Thank do you that. Guys. And if you have any updates, you're always more than welcome to come onto the show and, and present whatever updates you have. And we adore you, we support you, and we think you're just amazing. We, we think you're just, I think you're just amazing. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Seriously. Thank you, Alexa. You you are honestly, I mean, I can't describe it. You're just such a lovely, you're an, you're amazing. Aww. That's all I have to say. You're, you're fucking amazing. And, you. and your husband and your whole team. Thank, thank you, you so for much. doing what you're doing. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Gabs. Love you.
<laughs> love you, love love you. and come love on you. whenever you want love from london Ciao. love love from u.s you know it sounds like <laughs> shit it sounds like shit when it's u.s but love from u.s <laughs> love you thank you so much for coming on thank you my love thank you thank you okay all right all right you guys like what 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 um so we got some info from shelly we got some info from gabs we also got some info earlier on from gina right so we're like trickling down here and how are we feeling what are we feeling what do what do we want from our justice system that is legit funded by our tax dollars, right? What, what, what are we wanting? Man, this was an epic episode. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, I mean, it is what it is though, right? This isn't even that rare, I don't think. That's what's freaking me out. Okay, what is everyone saying? I'm just tired of the media not putting any coverage towards any of the survivors coming forward. Yeah, that's true. It's like how much, how many more victims need to come forward for somebody to actually hold this man accountable? All right. So I talked to Los Angeles Times. I talked yeah, to like, like Page Six. I talked to so and so, and like no one wants to cover it, man. Like, they just want to cover burners, bro. They want to cover the fact that, like, Diplo got out of Burn Man and Burning Man. I, I, no, that's violent. I don't want to, like, encourage violence, but, like, as a joke, for example, like, Diplo, just go into the mud, man. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> to make a TikTok about you in the mud. We don't want to necessarily a TikTok about you escaping the mud with Chris Rock, who is also attached to what's his name? I know Pelicano. Pelicano. Yeah, that or whatever. Voice I mean, it's terrible. just crazy. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Um, but round of applause for Gabs. Um, that's Definitely. really brave. And the fact that she wants to do this for other survivors. I mean, look at that. She's like, I don't know if anything's gonna happen for me, but I want Shelly to feel supported, or I want Gina to feel supported. To me, that's admirable. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the survivor train, right? And that's what they're trying to cut off. They don't want us communicating to one another. They don't want us broadcasting one another. And they don't want us to be in empowering situations. Um, they don't want us to be getting views. They don't want us to be spoken about. They don't want that. They want to be hidden underground the same way that they uh, began, um, allegedly, those conversations. So I think it's admirable that Gabby came on, Gabs came onto the show. And I can't wait to hear the updates. And I can't wait to hear what Diplo's going to do to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think what are you going to do, bro? It's, it's been only like two and a half weeks and already two people have come forward with alleged accusations of criminal behavior. Yeah, but also like what does Milos advise you to do? And we'll Whatever, see you on bro. the 19th. And we'll see you on the 19th. Um, so yes, everyone, please check out, um, support Gab's page. Yes. Support her music. And support E-Predators e for Predators. bringing survivors onto the platform. Like, let's go. This is a new era, right? They didn't see this coming. This is a new era. Survivors get to have their own show and bring on survivors and discuss these scenarios. This is new. This is revolutionary. And we all need to support it. I want to support it even if it wasn't me. You know what I mean? Seriously. If this was somebody else, like, this is what needs to happen. Survivors deserve a platform. They do. They've been, they've been pushed against for so long when it comes to platforms. So it's time. So I, think, 
I did bring forward a few things to decompress for everybody watching. Okay. Um, All right. So yeah, just help me could, decompress. Yeah, just to, before we break. Hi, everyone. And staying with us for all the hundred plus Thousand people. hours. Yeah, but um, I was actually sifting through the Joe Jonas lie detector test video. So I thought maybe we could watch like a minute of that and just decompress. That's funny as well. As, as well as the, the aliens that were found in Mexico. So um, No, 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 no. That's hilarious. Please bring up. The fact that Joe Jonas had a lie detector test when yeah. it came to. Yeah. Pull it up, pull it Let's up. Let's all take a collective breath, too, please. Just to breathe through the nose and exhale. God, I feel like I'm like in an L.A. yoga studio. But I, I want it. <laughs> I want that LA <laughs> bullshit right now. For me, maybe oh, not Nick. Thank you fuck. so much, kid. I think Nick would turn his chair for me, not okay. Kevin. Who do you think is a better songwriter? You or Nick? <laughs> I think Nick. Good to know. Moving on. You eloped in Las Vegas in what was meant to be a secret ceremony until Diplo live streamed the wedding. Were you angry with him? Yes. <laughs> Are you still angry with him? No. Are your parents still angry that you didn't give them a heads up? <laughs> Probably yes. Do you think Diplo can't be trusted? <laughs> wow. With weddings, probably not. In general, I think he can be trusted, so yes. N U D E S. Can any DJ be trusted? <laughs> Both of y'all. Both of y'all. <laughs> um, am I done with that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, both of y'all have a lot to um, connect on. So enjoy that. Um, thank you so much for uh, being a part of another episode of E Predators Daily as we set up our new setup and also learn how to do this live so thank you so much because this makes a difference for so many survivors and we appreciate you deeply um catch us next tuesday and thursday for our next lives and i can't wait to see this is the story a lot of bye and and here are some uh some aliens. This is in... the story a lot of people are talking about <laughs> Why are today. They in boxes? Alleged evidence of aliens. <laughs> and also here's some aliens. In Mexico. Experts who study extraterrestrials the cleanse the testified palette. in front of the country's they Congress. Look like are they real? Two bodies they look like and caskets actual revealed. Got my 15 year old self though is down oh, with this. Uh, air quote bodies, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. uh, the white looking corpse. <laughs> Adam too. <laughs> were said to be found in the Adam Stone. Adam, you're Stone. Don't even lie. Thousand years old. Dream Dream is down with. The aliens. <laughs> Scans of the body. Waiting for claim proof, right, Adam? They have the big brains. Yeah, we've been waiting, eyes, right? Three fingers. They lack teeth. Uh, this comes to <laughs> a former. Tell me when I'm off. Navy fighter pilot testified in front of U.S. Congress Hi. about the existence of UFOs. I'm just thinking, if I have alien bodies, I'm not keeping them under wraps for like six, seven years before no. I roll them out.